Guys, welcome to episode. Are we at 309 now? 309. 309. 309. Phantom 309. Yeah. The Phantom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Mm. <clears throat> Happy New Year, gentlemen. Happy New Year's. Yeah. Happy New Year. Tonight's podcast is brought to you by the letters Mai and Ty. <laughs> <laughs> That's respectful. How dapper. They're the drunkest letters in the Greek alphabet. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, not yet. I just woke up. <laughs> but I might have some absence at some point. So how how did your cause you were posting that you were drinking fun cocktails very early today and uh or yesterday or something. And yeah, so- yeah. Yeah, that did I didn't drink too many of those. I can tell you that very quickly they caught up with me (laughs) i didn't uh, have as much fight in me as i thought i would and uh, i had more sense than i usually do because i was like you know i drank one and i'm like wow i feel really good and i drank two and i i was like i feel like dangerously fucked up (laughs) i'm like i need to switch venues this is way i'm like and then I found out I gave my neighbor one uh, 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 absence, which is the lucid absent. And I found out that she got all whacked. <laughs> she got really drunk and passed out early and everything. Didn't see the ball drop. And she's like, you know, my neighbor, the guy, RJ, was like, what did you do to Molly? And I'm like, I gave her you know, a drink of absinthe. What's that? I'm like, oh, it's just stuff. <laughs> Did she well, hallucinate? Or? There was no hallucination. I was disappointed by that. Well, you probably, me and my wife on our honeymoon in Quebec, Canada. No uh, audio, Phil. Enjoyed about four or five uh, absinthe drinks, and we got kicked out of our Airbnb the next morning. <laughs> I believe it. Okay. I don't think it was even so much the absinthe, like the wormwood and everything. It's but it's a hundred and it was a hundred and twenty four proof, you know. There's I was, dude, there's I, something to that wormwood, man. There's because she woke up naked on the kitchen floor. I woke up naked in the bedroom. Everything was destroyed in the whole Airbnb. The people downstairs trying to eat breakfast casually when we walked down the steps looked at us like we were Satan coming down the steps. Like uh, that shit is. If eating. you guys want to get uh, absinthe, that's only sold in a website called Alandia.com. Uh-huh. Steve, Steve, you should pull that up because it's it's pretty cool. What is it called? Alandia, A L A N D I A dot com. The brand that I was drinking was the Lucid brand, and apparently it had two different types of wormwood in it. So, I mean, I, again, I don't know what that did for me or not, but. Dan, I got I got a marine insurance and company. <laughs> hey, hang on. You want to let me share? Fearless leader, fearless leader. Can you? Uh, you want to let me share? Hold on. Can we hear Phil? Oh can wait, no. Okay, I can hear you. You can hear me. Good. I can hear you. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah. All right. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm sharing this shit. This is interesting. All right, stand by. And here we go. There it is. All right. So that's Alandia.com. The uh, world of absinthe. And they sell everything. They sell the, well, you see the little dispenser fountain there. They sell the spoons and glassware. I didn't do anything right like you're supposed to in that whole regard. And, you know, the. No, that's just to make it more palatable. Yeah. Right. Well, you don't just soak a rag with this stuff and ask somebody to smell it. You actually drink this one? Yeah. <laughs> there was no drizzling it over a uh, sugar cube and all that stuff. Uh-huh. I did. I did put a. I just ended up putting like some. I made a simple syrup with by putting a little bit of sugar in a in a cup and water and microwaving it. I like how they have they have a whole section for strong absinthe. Right, like, that's you pretty the normal fun. shit. But if you really want to get fucking weird, you get the strong absinthe. That's awesome. 60% huh. alcohol. Apparently 35 milligrams per liter is what they consider to be strong. So, I mean, a liter 
you know, you know, liters, 37 ounces or 38 ounces. And for there to be only 35 milligrams, you guys know how small 35 milligrams is. So that's yeah. a very, very tiny amount of absinthe in a very large amount of something else. Well, isn't a baby aspirin like 88 milligrams? Yeah, exactly. So the, um, the active ingredient is called uh, uh, thought. Oh, I can't think of it now. It starts with a TH. THC? Too long. Too long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's where can you get, what's stopping you from just getting some wormwood somewhere and just licking it? I mean, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you, know, you know, John, I had a, heard a rumor that um, your teeth. you can not only make your own absinthe, but yeah. you can make your own alcohol and then make it into absinthe. Yeah. Right. I mean, where's Wormwood found? Is it only comes from France? I'm pretty sure not. But well, I you can buy it here. It's yeah. it's used in brewing. Mm -hmm. I've heard you could take really good whiskey and then melt some THC into it and have a fucking great night. That's what I've heard. I'm, yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Traditional delivery systems tend to work best for me. Um, I don't need to get into any Mr. Wizard chemistry shit. <laughs> I open my fridge and there's product and I take the product and I'm feeling great. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I don't really, I don't need to get into there's like, hmm, what if I can reduce this down to alcohol and use a double boiler? And, you know, to me, even the idea of making weed butter 20 years ago when that was a thing or 30 years ago, that was way too unnecessary. I was like, well, I already have the weed. I don't need to make the butter, you know? As <laughs> as Nature provides it in a very convenient and almost perfect form. It does. It's what, exactly butter? it. <laughs> yeah. That too, actually. Oh, butter. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can smoke a cigarette, but you can also chew tobacco. Have you tried churning your weed? <laughs> no, but I have I, seen a farmer feeding his pigs fucking weed. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Wheat bacon. And I don't even eat it. <laughs> right. That's it. It's already infused. You don't need to worry about infusing every goddamn thing. Everybody's infusing everything these days. Just <laughs> the pig's weed. The enthusiasm is off the charts. It is. We are extremely enthusiastic about everything these days. Enthusiastic. Oh. So Feeding so, your pig's weed when you're trying to fatten them up, I think, is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I know it worked on me all through college. <laughs> so it's 2021, and how many here have done motorcycle-related things today? Mike, raise your hand. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I watched some Fortnite videos. <laughs> Excellent. That's just foreplay for motorcycle stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. He's excellent. I love that guy. His production's great. In fact, I actually sent him an email asking if he'd like to be on our podcast. Oh, it's really? Thanks. Oh, yeah. Pretty, I really pretty, did. That's pretty cool. The uh, he did a really good. We he did something that is near and dear to all of us because he did a review of the very first uh, three wheelers, the ATCs. He did. And as we all know, anybody who was at uh, Mid Ohio with us last year, the year before, and I brought out that Y Zinger. Um, we all had to learn how to ride ATCs and how it's wrong and how it tries. It actually does try to kill you. Yeah. And so he basically spends twenty minutes explaining all the different ways it tries to kill you. Yep. So that's a really fun video, and it's also cool because he goes back in time and goes and gets all those Honda safety videos and training videos that say this doesn't always happen, <laughs> but when it shows like the ATC ripping a child's leg off, it says this doesn't always happen, but when it does happen, you want to be prepared for it. Right. Well, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. A tripod has always been very stable. Yes, exactly. There's no more stable than a tripod. Yeah. And ask anyone who's ever fallen off of a milking stool, you know, but, but I want to know how, when that all came to fruition, when they were really the whole three wheeler thing started to happen, how they decided to put just one up front and two in the back when the axle's solid, so it instantly makes it harder to turn, you had to lower the tire pressure just to make the thing have enough right. gushiness to let it do that, where they could have just put two up front and one in the back and not had any issues. Right. Well, the, wow. you, they did that eventually, and you see how poorly that worked out. Well, there's a lot of people in the front. <laughs> God the forbid. In the front was just, they were, it was evolving from a motorcycle into a fat tired something or other. Right. So it was, okay, well, let's try putting two wheel, big fat wheels in the back and we'll make this thing like this. Well, if you just put one in the front, you don't have to come up with 
you know, ball joints and heim joints and all this stuff to make, you know, true, true. a full suspension Nothing. and everything. And then there was no suspension, so we'll just put big balloon tires on it. Right. So now we basically made a kid's tricycle with a motor and big fat tires on it. Right. And so guess what? It was pretty dangerous because there was no suspension. There was only three wheels and it was big balloony tires. Yep. It was I think actually Actually, I mean, if you look at the later models, like the, the ones that were actual motor crossing, like the ones that they were racing that had full blown race suspensions and flat track tires and stuff like that, they were probably, I mean, outside from the fact that they had way too, you know, too much horsepower and everything, but I mean, that, there was guys who were, you know, a good person who could handle them, could sky them out, start, you know, doing 30 foot jumps and stuff on them. I com I completely agree that the best thing that ever happened to those was the idea that you just had to make the back axle three times as wide. And if you made <laughs> yeah. the back axle three times as wide and you made the back tires much shorter, yeah. then you basically just drifted it everywhere you went. You never stopped drifting. And as mm -hmm. long as you never stopped drifting, you were you were fine. The second yeah. you were, that was when shit went sideways. Right. Yeah, the flat tracker tire. The, I never. I remember watching the. You know, there was a local fair, and we went up there, and there was, there was going to be trike races. I mean, like people came to see this, yeah. and it was like you know they started out with guys on regular Honda Big Reds and stuff like that, and it was like it had been more fun watching a lawn tractor go around the course, which people do. Finally, like the like the last guy to go through was the beginning of like you know he had whatever it is the ATC two fifty R or whatever with a wide axle and flat track tires and it was like oh well that's what's that's a, oh he he flew around he was just drifted around the whole thing and it was like oh that's what all of these guys should have been doing yeah and now to this day there's still the preferred ice racing ATV thing. Right. Like for some reason, I don't know, probably because of the drifting capabilities or whatever, you know? Yeah. I, I just know that if I never ride one again, I'm totally okay with that. And that's fine. And for the type of work that I'm going to do with one, I absolutely don't need it to be three wheels. Having four wheels makes sense. And again, I don't think I would never buy one right now because it takes up just as much room as a quad runner would. Yeah. And you, if you're going to get something like of that size, I'd rather have a quad runner yeah. with racks on it and stuff like that. That's just more, you know, uh, so that's where that is. As far as the ice racing thing, <coughs> I think that could actually be because well, if you're hanging off the inside of the, the thing the whole time, not having two front tires, now you can actually kind of see where you're going because you're, you're just hanging off the inside of the bike with it laid out all the time. So maybe it's just as well. Yeah. Good point. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. So what did you, so you guys replaced fork seals in your GS850. Is that what you did today? Yeah. So yeah. my silver ghost, the silver one I painted, um, the four, when I brought it home, I, I, I probably squished the front end down a little hard. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that the guy probably had 20 PSI in the forks. So <laughs> when me and Dan, I met Dan the day I got it, I said, Dan, I'm going to come and ride with you. And he's like, yep, I'll ride the old uh, BMW. So we met. And within five minutes, like I thought the bike was on fire because it was smoke coming everywhere. And I'm like freaking out. And Dan's like, dude, look at your fork seal. And it was literally going <laughs> onto the header and just smoke. right on the exhaust. Yeah, it was bad. And we were like, but at the same time, I was kind of relieved to figure out that it wasn't on fire for real. Um, Steve Hofford's ascot's been doing the same thing. Yeah. So <laughs> sure get to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, okay, I got to do this. And it, you know, it's one of those things where I put a diaper on it and it, you know, that bike with the, how heavy it is and everything, just the handling is probably affected a little bit, but you know, it's not that bad. So, but being that it's 2021, I said, you know what, I'm going to take care of all the maintenance. So I got up early this morning since I didn't go crazy last night. And I, I, uh, I suspended the bike from my hundred year old garage that Mike helped me. Um, well, basically he did uh, re uh, rehab it to make it not fall apart. And I suspended the whole motorcycle from the top of the garage, <laughs> took the forks off. And then Mike has a heated garage and I don't. And so also I needed some extra hands. So I went to Mike and then we worked on my forks and yeah, we did the seals and added a thing and it seemed to be okay. I don't know. We'll find out in a little while, but I think we did a good job. Yeah. Did you ride it there and back or no? No, I took it apart in the garage and just took the forks over to him. That was, 
We were oh, okay. talking about we were talking about dragging it over on a trailer, but I didn't want to get salt and shit all over the bike since it's newly painted. So I just took it apart in my garage, took the stuff to his, and then we had fun. Yeah, we dug in. The uh, what may have, now when you replace those fork seals, did you use Suzuki's fork seals or did you use uh, somebody else's fork seals? Um, it's the uh, Never Leak, whatever they are, the, uh, the blue and yellow Never Leak proof or whatever ones. Yeah, like I was on the GS forums and they told me that they've had more success with those than they have with the stock Suzuki Correct. fork seals. That yeah, being said, when we took off the old ones, it was like the inner diameter of the old fork seals they weren't even tight enough to snug up to the actual fucking forks. Like there was no, like, in fact, you know, like you watch all these videos, you do whatever to check it. And they're like, okay, you're going to have to pop the fork seal out with all these fucking things and shit. Yeah. That's the ones I used. Um, The old ones just came out. Yeah. Like we didn't do anything. Like we pulled the kernels out and they they just popped out, man. The the thing that you just saw said 37 millimeter, what size were the ones we took out? 36 or, or no, the ones 39, 39, yeah. 39. But you mic'd them out. You mic'd them out as 39s. Yeah. No, there's Your a big bike. label on it that said 39 millimeter. <laughs> oh no, they actually were, t- they were stamped 39. They were labeled. Yeah. hundred well, percent. Your bike's a 37, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you gotta use what you gotta use, man. <laughs> it's not like we're going a hundred miles an hour on these fucking things. No, but somebody, yeah, somebody decided to put the wrong fork seals. In so somebody in the past put 39 millimeter fork seals on a 37 millimeter fork. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's they, what happened. And, and I think they used radiator fluid for a uh, shock lube. Yeah. The shock, it smelled bad and it was not good. It was, uh, no, it, you're it, supposed it, to use brake fluid for that. So it helps swell up the seals. Yeah. And that helps your dampening. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's better, right? So it's all good. So, so steer clear of fork oil and just use brake fluid. Every time. Yeah. Seriously? An old, uh, an old what, 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 what type of brake fluid? Dot four, dot three? What do you what's your recommendation here, sir? Um if you can find dot one, that's the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the temperature I still has some of that. The the boiling temperature is no longer significant. What you're getting into it for is the fact that it does tend to seal the rubber. The rubber expands when the brake fluid hits it. And I just think that viscosity is much better for your rebound dampening through your valving. Yeah, really? it's just and I've never done the full I've never done the full brake fluid swap, but I can tell you that it was a trick I picked up from old timers when they would get an old bike and it would have these these bills that just were leaking a little bit or weeping a little bit before they would change them or while they were trying to sell the bike, they would put <laughs> DOT3 in it, they'd put brake fluid in it, and that would swell the seal up, swell the fork seal up, and that would give it a good bite and it would stop leaking for a while, you know, but you're oh, not, yeah. I don't think brake fluid is, um, you know, five weight or 10 weight or, or anything <laughs> in between. Um, I think brake fluid is probably zero weight. It's so, water. Well, yeah. speaking of weight, so, so this is funny. So I ordered all this stuff like six months ago to do this, right? right. And then, you know, things happen and whatever. And I, for, you know, pushed it aside. So the, today I went to grab all the stuff when I decided to do this and I looked and my, my four coil was five weight. And I'm like, fuck, man, I ordered 10 weight. They fucked it up. So I called the shop and Renee answered. She was still there. She was working out, you know, and uh, hey, on New Year's Day. Yeah, Renee, but they weren't open, but you know, whatever. She was like, well, I can leave you some 10 weight out if you want to do it. I was like, great. I'll pay you guys whenever. whatever." So I go and I drive all the way to your shop, pick up the 10 weight, and then I'm on my way to Mike's house. Yeah. And I look and the other stuff that I had, the label peels off. And there was a five, there was a five weight label on the 10 weight fucking oil. Yeah. So I get to his house and I have two things of 10 weight oil now. It's like, set. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, so she did pork oil. We put a whatever label that you need on it, and that's what it is. <laughs> you must have got one of those because that's yeah. what that was. You need, you yeah. need five weight? Hold on. There you go. Now it's five. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this sharpied out? Was it 15? So does no. the uh, brake fluid trick work on engine seals too? Oh, I, I would know. assume everything fluid trick works on all rubber, all natural rubber. Mm-hmm. Because I can, I can also tell you that it, it, that it does swell up, you know, the brake fluid will make rubber swell up, but does I does it leave any chafing. What's that? Does, does it, it leave, cause chafing? Yeah, absolutely causes chafing. It can it replace the so you don't want to. 
So if you dip your doink into some brake fluid, will you be ready for the lady at night? <laughs> well, especially if it swells up. That's what I- Only if she's driving an ambulance. <laughs> right. Yeah. That That's thing's exactly. falling off, dude. <laughs> but you got to be careful with brake fluid because brake fluid is one of those things that whether you're talking about a DOT three, four or five full synthetic, you know, brake fluid does do awful things to uh, painted surfaces, to polished surfaces, That's true. anything clear coated. So uh, brake fluid is one of those substances on earth that does seem to fuck with everything else. Mm. So there's very few things in the world that are impervious to brake fluid. Uh, it's a distant cousin of anti-seize. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, you can, if those ever get together, keep those on different shelves. Keep those away, keep, keep those away my, from each other. My and brother-in-law. Other thing, um, go ahead, Steve. Sorry. Oh, my brother-in-law makes. Uh, he owns a bike shop, a bicycle shop, mm-hmm. and he was making a custom tricycle for this guy. And he didn't have. He wanted to use um, the hardware. I, I had a, a spare set of uh, like uh, the brake reservoir and the caliper and the disc from uh, PC eight hundred. And he wanted to use that on this bicycle because the guy was, you know, the guy was hefty and so oh, he hundred pounds. Yeah, I mean, he was he was heavier, and he okay. so I gave him the thing, and he and he made it, he machined it, and he got it to work. You know, he had it all mounted because the guy had like a neuralgia or something, so. If you wanted the big handles so that he yeah. could hand, like you know, it'd be easier for him to, to work the brakes. Okay. Well, my brother-in-law put mineral oil in the reservoir instead of dot, which is like dot one. Dot one. Versus yeah. dot three. Right. But it destroyed every piece of rubber yeah. in the entire system. The, right. All the seals swelled up so far that nothing would work. Right. It's, and the guy was riding the bike, and when he... He it was working perfectly fine, and then he one day he pulled it, it locked up, and he just went down on it. And so when he took it apart, he really he pulled the seals out to try to see what was going on with it. And they, he said that they were twice the size when he once he pulled them out, they expanded to twice the size of what they were because he used mineral oil instead of dot three. Right. Wow. So, yeah, it's nasty stuff. Uh, in the world of shop chemicals, there is that which is on the evil side of the spectrum. I mean, it will remove substances like meth- methyl ethyl ketone and like certain things have terrible properties. On the other side is automatic transmission fluid, ATF. ATF is God's own substance. Apparently you can use ATF in anything, in any application. Uh, I I was you know, I mentored under a guy that was like, well, if we're working on an ancient piece of equipment and we don't know what to put in there due to a hydrostatic drive or something like that, he says, we're always going to start with ATF. So if we don't know what substance used to go into this, you know, 1940s vehicle, we always, he said, he just, we start with ATF because like ATF is the most pure, least offensive, least aggressive fluid that they can, that you can put into a vehicle. My my CX-5 actually called for ATF in the forks. Which one? My CX-500. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I seem to recall that too, because I rebuilt the forks on my CX-500. I'm like, I think I put ATF in there. Mm-hmm. I use, I'll do that too. And my Jack, my floor Jack ATF. Well, that's what, when I was doing research to make sure we had the right, you know, I was trying to get the milliliters and like what you'd need to put back in the forks. And so I was doing, you know, GS 850 fork oil, whatever. Um, a lot of the things said like, you know, mix 30% ATF into your 10 weight fork oil. oil. Yeah. To get yeah. whatever. And that was like a big deal. We didn't do it, but it was a, you know, a lot of that was common. What's right. amazing. Like how the, like, if you look at the GL scale, like the GL ones and whatever, right. yep. and then you look at motor oil, it's almost like a, you look at a 75 weight, like GL four. Right. It's, it's like a 30 weight oil. It's, it's like, 30 weight it's, oil. yeah. Right. And it's, and you go through that stuff. And what we do is we use ISO, the ISO number, like right. it's like 460 or 220 and for the blowers and everything else we have. And so it just depends on the additive package. Like if you, you want foaming or not foaming and, and uh, then you just go by the, the, the number based on that gives you a viscosity and, and then friction modifiers and stuff like that. Right. 
So the good news for people who would like a handy shop tip is when you're buying quality oil and um, you know, around here we, I like the Rotella personally. So I'm a, I'm a fan of the Rotella oils. Yeah. And if you look at the back of the bottle of a good quality of oil, it will have the different ratings. So it'll not only will it have the 10 W 30 or 10 W 40 or 15 W 40, but it will also have a GL rating on it and it'll have an SAE rating and it'll have a bunch of other stuff on there. And uh, when you do, look at those things you do if you're going to use it in your motorcycle or anything with a wet clutch you do want to make sure it has an mso rating on the back so if you look at the container you're not absolutely certain make sure that the oil you know we joke if it doesn't have a picture of a motorcycle on the bottle you're taking your chances but if you do flip the thing around and it says that is jso ma yeah. so jaso ma would be motorcycle applicable and that's a good way to make sure that you're getting a legal or an oil that can operate in your wet clutch without destroying it which most are most diesel oils compatible to a wet clutch yeah. yeah most of them are there are only one or two that i found over the years that don't have the jso ma uh, designation on them and honestly i think it's because the manufacturer of the oil didn't bother paying for that level of testing no it's interesting too i thought i always thought that um diesel oils had more like high high pressure additives and they don't I think it's they, the other way around. They have less because yeah. the RPM is so low that they don't need to have it. Yeah. But they have a lot of uh, anti-carbon, yeah. like uh, anti-carbon agents. I mean, it's like they're formulated to, to like uh, keep the carbon in suspension mm. rather than uh, have like high high pressure. Um, additives in case you lose yeah. your oiling so right that's what that was my understanding the way it was explained to me years ago the first time i went on a racetrack and saw that everybody at the racetrack was running rotella and but i thought that t was hilarious it's, it's the t6 right like the t well the t6 is the best you can buy but okay but you can anything, anything up to that will work you know oh i didn't know that i thought you had yeah. to use the t6 well just flip the bottle around and make sure it says jso ma so right. if you flip the bottle around it says jso ma my computer is so fucked up what's that <laughs> My computer is so fucked up. Oh, really? You, are, you guys are always like every half a second is like this slurry, slow motion, and then it over speaks and then you catch up and I'm having a great time. So you just keep going. Whatever the fuck you guys are doing. Chemically <laughs> over there. Mine was mine does that out in the garage and it's really weird. Yeah, that's where I am. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You gotta get yeah. more bandwidth, man. More bandwidth. Dude, I got a T six underground to the freaking building and then I'm I've got a hundred percent Wi-Fi signal. Yeah, but maybe I need a booster to push that T6 underground. I don't. Yeah, I, I have no idea what that is, but we get the same thing here, where it's like <laughs> when we're plugged in, we everything we need. <laughs> it, it actually seems to correlate directly with the furnace turning on and off. So maybe there's a little something going on. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird because when my furnace turns on, I piss myself, but I never really thought about it. <laughs> you piss yourself when you're. <laughs> anyway, sorry to interrupt the motorcycle talk. Anyway, <laughs> light in his head. <laughs> I'm luggage today, I guess. I don't know. Fine. Fuck. <laughs> So did you guys do anything else other than address those fork seals? Uh, that was pretty much it. And then I realized. We did a, no, we did a firearm safety minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. We gave your kids a firearm safety lesson. Yeah, yeah. pass the nine around, just see what's going on in the hood. And then Mike got a new little toy. What is that thing? Like a, a nine millimeter oh. AR or something or whatever? Dude, you don't, he's outing me and he doesn't even know because he's. You're so beautiful. Oh, your so, wife didn't know? Sorry. <laughs> I, I went in, no, I went into a store in Middlefield to pick up a nice little planking 22 with a scope or something. I don't know. Couldn't decide. And I didn't like anything they had. So I was walking around and I saw this thing in the wall for $299 or something. Maybe it was $199. I don't even know. It was cheap, cheaper than everything else around it. <laughs> and so I said, hey, what's that? Because <laughs> it looked like a 22 or something right. ugly. It looked like the gun from the Planet of the Apes. Oh, yeah. So you're out. Don't guess. So, yeah, right? So I, I get this thing in my hands, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is like Tupperware with a, a, an ability to project a thing. And uh, so you, when you burp it, it just, whoop, loot around. Yeah. <laughs> so I bought the thing. It was a total, yeah, I just it's did cool. it. I can guess what that might be. Go for it. Was that a high-point carbine? It was. It's a nine nine five. You're right. You're absolutely right. 
Mm-hmm. And it is hilarious. And so I put, a, of course, a green dot. That's the right thing to do. I uh, put a green dot on it, which is just hilarious. So you're, you're slinging a nine millimeter at 50 yards within four MOA with that. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I don't want to get no, in trouble. Cool. That thing is cool as shit, man. It was really it's hilarious though. Yeah. It's my favorite funny thing. I've, I think that might be the funniest thing I've ever bought in my life. Of the 14 things I bought. Yeah. Well, it's cool. <laughs> I like it a lot. I think it's awesome. It's yeah. not a trap gun, mind you. I'm still looking for a trap gun, but you know, it's it's all good. Yeah. yeah. So you guys went out. I, I stopped in for a minute. It looked like you guys were having so much fun at the at the skeet trap, you know, whoop de doo thing. Oh, that was yeah, a great we day. Class. Yeah. It was I, good- I realize it's ancient history now, but I just I wanted to let you guys know that like I was I wanted to shoot, but I'm like <laughs> I don't want to be the guy that and wipes out the crowd, you know. So <laughs> I didn't. But. uh do you want to be Dick Cheney? <laughs> I don't want to be Dick anything. I mean, <laughs> if I can avoid all, yeah, but yeah. <clears throat> Cleveland yeah. Moto Podcast, all seven guys taken out by a random dick. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know. today I was watching a video because I was, I, was um, I watched a couple of Bond movies and obviously I watched it. I was like, oh yeah, like Walter PPK. And I was like, that's, that's, it's it's a small one, obviously, but it's just novelty, I guess. It seems like everyone should just have one. Is, yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody should have the suit and the Walther. So, like, that should just be standard equipment. If you're a, if you're a cool guy, you should just have the you, suit. You have one, right, Phil? Or you had one? A Walther? Yeah, I got yeah. a bunch of them. Yeah. And that was always the thing because you could just stand it. You could buy them for 400 and sell them for 700 whenever you needed to. Because there was always some white guy. There was always some white guy with a ponytail. Right. The white guy with a ponytail would come up. He'd be the only guy at the gun show wearing a sport coat. (laughs) You saw him. You just just walk up to him with your Walther. And it didn't matter, you know, your PPK. And it didn't really matter who made it as long as the grip on it said Walther. And you just walk up to him with your PPK or PPK replica and be like, look, man, this, <laughs> this would go great with your Lotus, you know? <laughs> oh, no, he did not. It was he just, did. and that was a guaranteed $700. Yeah. But yeah, you could buy them all day long for 300 <laughs> or 400 bucks. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. So, so Phil, have you had any, um, so was, how was the uh, last minute? Oh, shit, I have to buy a scooter for my rich uh, kid uh, Christmas thing. Did you talk to Renee? No, no, I did. No. We waved because she was leaving as I was going, and we, we talked on the phone just to say, "Hey, I got it. Thank you so much." Whatever, but no, I didn't hear anything. Yeah, we we were like, okay, if we have to be there, you know, we're there on the thirty first. You know, we're we're going to be there. We're going to work, right? Right. And uh, so that was the plan: was we were going to give it everything. And I had all of my leads. I had all these people I talked to over the past three months about stuff who didn't buy anything, and. All the manufacturers, every fucking manufacturer had some kind of a deal that ended yesterday. Right. Okay. End of the year. Right. Um, And that's how you can tell it's COVID. That's how you can tell we're Americans because it's like, oh, this, this might be getting real right now. We should throw money at them. And so Vespa has had a deal, you know, well, Piaggio has had a deal that if you are military, firefighter, first responder, um, you get uh, $500 off anything, like even a $2,800 bike, you're going to get 500 bucks off. And that's a pretty fucking steep discount on a relatively inexpensive bike. But Quick then question, what is a $2,800 Vespa? Uh, like the Piaggio Liberty 150. Okay. Yeah. Liberty 150. It's mm-hmm. five miles an hour ABS mm-hmm. brake. A solid bike. It's legit. Okay. But anywho, so a few months ago, they softened it. And so they softened it as a result of COVID. Well, more. Now they turned it into if you were a healthcare worker or if you were an educator. So they basically meant if you had any kind of a job where you had a badge to get in the building, 500 bucks off, right? And it's shocking because Vespa never gives that kind of a deal. Piaggio never gives that much money for basically just what you got and it's for current shit it's for modern stuff other it's not like the shit they need to get rid of that's two years old that's how they normally operate so this deal was an insane deal and in fact it's kind of one of those things like if you were kind of bullshitting me or or feeding me a line about how you were gonna buy one in april or may 
and this deal trots up and you don't buy one, then I know you were just full of shit to begin with. You were never going to buy one. So it was very, it was very funny on Friday or uh, Thursday, all the people that called my shop as I just dropped two Instagram posts and one Facebook post that said, seriously, this, this deal ends when I leave the building Mm -hmm. today. And the people that called were just hilarious. They were like, I want to get the $500 off deal. And I was like, do you know what bike you're looking at? No, but I want to get the $500 off deal. (laughs) So that was kind of funny. So people were definitely buying the discount at that point. But James got the winner of the deal. A a guy came into the shop to pick up a Vespa he was buying for his son. And while there, he started talking about like, well, he's going to park it in the garage and hide it next to his McLaren. And so I said, you have a McLaren? He goes, oh, well, I had to get the McLaren because after I had the BMW i8 and I realized it didn't do what I wanted the car to do and I tried to trade the BMW i8 in, the only thing I could flip it into and not have negative equity was the McLaren. So he was forced to buy a McLaren because of the low resale value of his i8. I was like, that's a problem I'll never fucking have. And then he tells me, oh, he's got the, a the, Ford. The new one has the prostate warmer and the vibrating thing. Yes. Yeah. Well, then he tells me yeah. he's got a Ford GT, but, you know, it's a red one. And, you know, he's had it for a few years wow. now. And, you know, he knows it's going to be worth more money because now they're all EcoBoost. And his is one of the, the V8s. But he just keeps it on the rack. He doesn't really drive it. It's only got 300 miles on it. Uh, wait, wait, wait. This is in Ohio? Yeah, well, he's actually technically he's in Pennsylvania. But what's funny though is while he was in, while he was in the shop, I think I put cables in this guy's house. Yeah. Anyway, and while he was in the shop, I was like, "Well, have you seen the new Zero SRS?" <laughs> yeah. Because oh fuck. He's the guy that he's the guy that legitimately he he beat me up to the tune of like he made me give him a free helmet when he bought this oh, you know eight thousand dollar Vespa for his kid. So I showed him the, the zero. I was like, I was like, well, this is an electric bike. And he goes, yeah, my lawyer has one. And I said, well, what's your lawyer's name? You know, cause you're in Pittsburgh. We probably, he tells me the name and I was like, shit. Yeah. We sold your lawyer, his zero. And he's like, well, then I have to buy one. <laughs> and I said, get the fuck out of here. And he goes, no, he goes, now, which one did he buy? And I walked him over and showed him the zero DSR. And I'm like, he bought that exact bike. He goes, well, which one is better? Oh yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. And Almost. I said, well, this one over here is, and he's like, the only thing better is two of them. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. And so, but then the funny thing was the guy's a consummate chiseler. So I showed him the bike and he was like, well, what's the absolute best deal you can give me? And I'm like, we're doing almost $4,000 off on a zero right now because right. of the tax credit and everything else. And like a son of a bitch, he was like, well, no, but what can you really give me off? <laughs> and I'm like, you just got a $4,000 discount, man. Give him a full tank. Yeah, come on. So I'm throwing a free tank of gas. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let me go plug it in real quick. And uh, so like, it was hilarious. How much of a deal do you want? How many inches can you take? Because right. That- <laughs> and so it turns out, you know, so that was our last official day of being open. Um, be- before we closed, because when James closed the deal on the Zero SRS, I was like, well, shut the lights off. You all are going home. You know, everyone goes home now because we're not going to do any better than that. And we always have a competition at the shop to see who can sell the last bike of the year. Ah. Normally, I'm out of town because Merritt and I like to go take adventures during Christmas holiday. So this is the only time I've been home in 12 years. And so James usually gets the last kill. And so James, I gave James the kill on the SSR, the zero. And then, of course, after he'd fucked off. Then uh, the phone started ringing because I kept hitting the Instagram and the Facebook on these Vespas and people were like, ding, ding, ding. So, but here's a little tip. Here's a tip, a consumer tip. In times of empirical financial disaster, if you're not sure whether or not it actually is a financial disaster, if the rest of the world is telling you it's okay, the stock market's doing great. Any company that offers you some kind of kooky discount that ends on, you know, December 31st, you know, that, that this discount ends on December 31st. If the next day they announce on their website that that discount that ended on December 31st is going on for another seven months, the economy's fucked. Ah, okay. okay. 
because that's when they build these things in and they build that promotion in, it's because they're hoping to stimulate sales for their books and their receipts and what they tell the government and what they tell the tax people that they've sold in a year. So that sale goes until December 31st. Now, if that sale goes away, mission accomplished. But if that sale stays on and they just like, oh, we're going to extend it out of the goodness of our heart, be advised. That's because the economy is not rebounding. And that's, uh, that's something that we saw every single one of our manufacturers that was offering some kind of a discount. This morning or last night at 6.05 p.m., I got an email that said, we've extended it out of the goodness of our heart. It's not out of the goodness of your heart, it's out of the weakness of your bank book. So uh, it is, that's the reason these major manufacturers and these big, big companies will extend those kind of discounts uh, because that is a discount for them. $500 off on a $3,000 bike is a tremendous discount. I mean, that's a, that's a very big deal. So maybe they're all becoming like Harbor Freight where everything is on sale all the time. <laughs> we're always extending and we're always having a three day sale yep. and we're having super, super discounts and it's always a, it's always on sale. And that'll turn into nobody's ever bought anything at my shop without a coupon. <laughs> so it's like right, right. somebody comes in and they just buy it straight up. You're like, are you not aware of the coupon? Did you not get the email? So I've never seen anything at the actual suggested retail price ever. No, no. There's and there actually was, remember there was a lawsuit about that too, because they, they got in trouble for saying, Oh, it's always on sale. Nobody's ever purchased it at the 99 99 price point. So Phil, so the, the new stimulus just came out. In fact, me and my wife just got, a stimulus today from mm -hmm. the government. And Are you we, feeling stimulated? No, we paid bills, uh, <laughs> vet bills and thing, I, whatever. But anyways, <laughs> the last last stimulus and now this one, do you think that's going to affect your business at all? Like, is that money that people use on scooters and motorcycles and things? Oh, like another that? another boom of people well, buying bikes? I guess I would say the first thing is, did you get a $600 stimulus or a $2,000 stimulus? Uh, 600 for each person plus a kid. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so that was in our account this morning and then we paid a bill and now we're done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say that if that stimulus arrived in March or April, like the first one did, yeah, that people would probably run out and buy bikes with it. Um, I would say that because that stimulus is hitting right at January 1, people are probably not going to buy bikes, but they're probably going to pay bills with it. Yeah. Well. Um, and they're probably going to pay down debt they have with it. If it had been $2,000 and me and my wife were get, each getting $2,000, Plus five hundred for the kid. Yeah. I mean, you were just getting almost five grand. Mm -hmm. You might say, uh, "I'm going to go ahead and I could almost turn that into a whole really cheap bike or something." Absolutely. But six hundred bucks—that's kind of a drop in the bucket. That's like deposit it in the account. We'll pay off some bills, buy some grocery, and keep chugging along. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. It. Yeah. I mean, we know that the first the first time that that hit, people spent money on bikes, but it wasn't because of the stimulus check. It was because there was six hundred dollars a week added to your unemployment. Yeah, right. So a lot of our customers in Cleveland did lose their jobs and they found themselves pulling in unemployment. So whatever their unemployment was, if your unemployment was five, ten a week, you throw six hundred on top of that. Right. Then that's a massive windfall. That's a huge amount of money. So yeah. that's 600 a week, that, that, that kicker to the unemployment check, that's what sold bikes around our shop. So basically what you're saying is, is like this 600 bucks, mm -hmm. it's not going to really do what they want it to. And that's to stimulate the local economies because right. most of us just owe money to the big fed in the big places. So when we get right. this, like we did today, we just paid off bills to the big companies that didn't do shit. I would assume most people would do that. They would pay credit card bills. They'd pay stuff right. like that, you know, but they'd pay down some debt. Uh, because I, I mean, unless of course they're going to be like, well, now would be the time to buy the tickets for that cruise. That's going to happen in mid July. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we know people that, that thought they were getting a great deal when they bought tickets for a cruise back in October, they bought tickets for a cruise that was going to happen in April long after COVID was gone. Right. right. And so they got these crazy deals on these cruises that's going to happen in April. And you know what? The, those cruises aren't happening. So, but that was a way for the companies to get money out of the folks, you know, basically telling them, oh, well, COVID will be over by April. Don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. If that money had hit before Christmas, like right after Thanksgiving, yeah. then sure, it would have done things. People would have been, all right, I got an extra 600 bucks. I can go a little bigger on some Christmas presents and that. Oh, thank goodness. But now that it's hit here, 
there. Now it's just, this is everybody's making a new year's revolution to lose weight and tighten, and tighten their belt. So that's all they're going to do with that money is, you know what, maybe buy a gym membership and, <laughs> and save it. Yeah. So, sir, I'll uh, until all those there. bikes start boomeranging. All those bikes that got purchased on the first hit that now people are, it's cold out and things are getting a little darker and they didn't get as much money or whatever. They're going to start selling those off those bikes. Already. Yeah, those phone calls are coming in. People that bought bikes in April are already trying to pay bills. Yep. And people that thought they yeah. were in, yeah, people that thought they were going to suck up 14 weeks or 23 weeks of unemployment at an additional $600 per week. What's happening right. is their their jobs are gone now and they're running off the unemployment. So the only thing they've got that they can liquidate real quick to pay some bills is the bike they bought in April. Unemployment ran out. Yeah. And uh, then it just got extended. Peggy's trying to see if she can, you know, now you've got to re up, but there's no extra, extra. It's, it's like going to be like 300 bucks a week, right. which is, I mean, um, that's okay, but that's not, that's not $400 a week plus $600 a week on top of that. Not having a job. That was crazy. Yeah. So we all talked about uh, Christmas gifts and stuff. Did anybody get any motorcycle Christmas gifts for Christmas this year or holiday or whatever you celebrate? Nobody? I got leather gloves, but they were just leather gloves. I wouldn't even necessarily call them leather gloves. I'll probably Do they have the little part of the carabiner? Oh, no, don't tell. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, they're just leather gloves. I don't know. I'm just trying to get a feel. They're just... They're, they're more like Corvette driving leather gloves. Oh, do they wow. say Corvette on them? I didn't. It would be nice if they don't have exposed knuckles, which would be nice if they had exposed knuckles. Right. <laughs> that is a great tan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had for years, Stephen probably did too, or maybe whoever. All the knuckles and a little oval on the back of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> but but some of those were I started to fade and then I gained thirty pounds. Yeah, but <laughs> some of those were bicycling gloves and some were just like punk rock gloves. So you had to distinguish between <laughs> if they had the metal little things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why you would own any gloves on planet Earth? Yeah, that was a different actually crochet and crotched. Yes, if they if they actually they took the covering off of your knuckles, that's <laughs> not gloves anymore. That's like chaps, man. It's just the worst thing. It's those are hand chaps. That's yeah, all they, assless <laughs> knuckles. Yeah, yeah, assless assless gloves. The uh, so <laughs> I'm sorry, but my knuckles need to breathe. Exfoliate <laughs> <laughs> those knuckles, man. That's so I did, my wife, being to her credit, actually uh, paid attention to my rambling thoughts at some point and ended up getting me four of Neil Pert's books. Uh, oh, cool. Nice. All his motorcycling books and stuff. And they're fucking good. I'm like, I, I put a good two and a half hours into reading yesterday. And like the dude is a fucking art author. He's not just a rock star that wrote books. He's an actual fucking author. Like his, it, his, his, they're really good. Like reading them is like reading Mark Twain or something. It's really a good read. So I'm pretty stoked about that. It's pretty cool. And I feel very intellectual because I'm like, hey, I'm reading books, man. I'm reading books. <laughs> <laughs> I did get one thing that was at least shop related. I got that Harbor Freight LED uh, shop light yeah. and I'm really happy with it. They're $20 and it's not a four footer. It's like a three footer or whatever, but it is super bright. And the actual it's light. Girthy, though. What's that? It's girthy. It's got some girth to it. Oh really? No, the one that I have is just yeah. <laughs> it's not this long. It's it wasn't too big. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You had no problem, video off. Uh, but John had no problem making a lightsaber video with it, which was fucking right. great. Oh, oh that's yeah. the one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 That's a girth, the girthy one, man. <laughs> yeah. Phil's, Phil's is a little wider than it is long, but give him a little credit. It's fine. But I, I don't know how long it'll hold up and everything like that. As far as we'll see if it, how long if it lives, because I tend to leave the lights in the garage on like almost all the time. Yeah, just like <laughs> lights. I lights are on, so don't come in here. There's somebody in here, kind of thing. Yeah, but. Uh, 
It's but super bright. LED that one LED, LED light is brighter than two uh, four foot double bulb, four foot fluorescent. So, yeah, I'd like to get another one. And two of those in my garage will be ridiculously bright. Yeah. And that is that is totally the way to go with all the shot, the stuff we're doing in the shop and the stuff that I'm doing in my garage at home. Anything, any of those four foot LED uh, tubes. Yeah, they're they're literally 50 percent as many tubes gives you more light. And plus, they, they are, their draw is almost nothing. They don't have the freaking ballasts in them. So we're finally lighting the place like, you know, a modern society. I bought, I, bought, I went, to, went to Harbor Freight and for 50 bucks, they have a four tube LED fixture, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, more light, better. And yeah. so in my paint shed that I made, I put those up and then I, <laughs> then I took the metallic uh, bubbly stuff, the insulation, and I wrapped the whole shed with that to keep it warm, right? Yeah. But I didn't yeah. put on the lights. Okay. Oh, okay. So I did all that. And then finally I turned the lights on and I was like, <laughs> 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 and I, I couldn't see for like 15 minutes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So much light coming through everywhere and reflecting off everything that I'm like, I don't know if I can paint in here. I can't see anything. <laughs> You know, painting a welding helmet. Yeah, right. <laughs> a- the new LEDs are impressive, man. They really are. Yeah, because that one I got is just, it's one tube. It's just yeah. one LED tube. Well, take it. Like, so- holy fuck. And it came from Harbor Freight, so I'm sure it's the same thing, but there's four in each one of mine, and I have two of those in my shed. So there's eight tubes of that shit in a 330 square foot shed that's all covered in silver. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> you just hope they're not overdriving them because they won't last then. Right. Yeah, that's but- my question: is we'll see how long it lasts. You know, uh, if it goes out in, uh, in two or three weeks of use, I'm going to be pissed. But right. well, I'll tell you this: I, I have four uh, Harbor Freight three and a half foot two tube LEDs in my garage, and they've been on for a year and a half, and they're still going, so right. they're fine. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> If I have to re if I have to buy a twenty dollar light every couple of years, I would do it. Totally cool with it. Totally worth it. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like changing the light bulb. It's about the same price too, realistically. Especially through horror freight. Yeah. Hold on, I gotta go. My uh, grandma's heart monitor's beeping. I gotta go unplug her. I'll be back. I'll be. (laughs) (laughs) Too soon. (laughs) How how is the Hoff compound coming? Well, I had to work today, and then I went over there. I'm running an ozone, like a really strong ozone generator in the house to try to get rid of all the raccoon smell. Yeah. Wait, did, so did you get rid of the uh, raccoons already? Yeah, I got the raccoons are gone. So the, are they are they gone and drowned in cages as you watch them die, or are they just gone? No, um, I I was very generous. I left them out something to drink, <laughs> uh, a bunch of antifreeze, <laughs> and they just must have drank it all and walked outside and expired because there's not one in the house. It doesn't smell like dead animals and there's no raccoons left in there. So, all right. Wow. So, but then when I got there, the, the only raccoon in there was the old owner's husband. Oh. <laughs> and he was selling, he's selling the, like the house. They gave me the keys. So, you know, I went in there to check everything out to make sure it's okay. All right. I mean, there's all this junk in there. I'm like, okay. I got a dumpster from, because I got a free dumpster. I got a 30-yard dumpster. Right. And I'm chucking all this shit in the dumpster. And and then I call them. I'm like, okay, can I get rid of the rest of the stuff in the house? Right. And they're like, no, that's all valuable. We're selling it. What? So they're selling like, like uh, well, John, I think John might have seen it the other day. It was, they're like, they're selling these, uh, like, uh, uh, these shelves, like they're like, um, press board like particle board shells yeah, and yeah like it's just all garbage yeah but the, the the design of the house is actually pretty cool but the the guy took out the support main support wall for the living room he put a four by six with two steel beams and then he boxed in the windows and laid the beam on top of the the these boxes around the windows steel beams to the center of the house and then added another steel beam 
or another uh, four uh, four by six beam, but he didn't run it parallel to the old. He didn't run it parallel to the joist. Yeah, he didn't run it perpendicular to the joist. He ran it parallel to the joist. Why the fuck would he do that? Uh, I have no idea. But right now, the thing, he, like he took, so the house is, the design is cool. It's like the whole front of the house is open. I mean, right. and it would be, I mean, you could, you could, all of us could be in there and we'd be 20 feet apart. I mean, that's how right. much space there is. Yeah. And then, but then he removed this wall and he put the the support along one of the, you know, like I said, so I need to, I need to change the, the header. I need to put a header in right. that's running uh, perpendicular, perpendicular to the, to the, um, you know, the ceiling joist or the second floor jo- joist. I'm confused. I think they'll actually get the stuff out of there. They've been throwing it out. I mean, they've been like selling it. Like today, I, I drove by my house and there's people in my house. Yeah, I was going to say, what day did it become your house? Like uh, six weeks ago. Holy shit. I'm just yeah. trying to be nice to him because, you know, yeah. I knew the guy that lived there and I was just, I'm just trying to be nice. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, oh, we're taking the furnace and the hot water tank too. I'm like, fuck <laughs> no. You're not those, are, of, you're not those are fixtures. That. Those are fixtures. And in any sales agreement, those would never be able to take it out. Right. And I yeah. said, if I tear it down, you can have them. I don't care if I tear it down. But now, since you, you took so long to get out of the house, I can't start construction till till next, right. you know, till the spring. So yep. I need to put my lab in that house. Yep. And so I said, I need hot water and I need yep. heat. Yeah, and so he's like, "Well, you know, I don't think anything leaks. I open all the valves, and you know, it's like." Yeah, I will so. tell you the day that we got our the day that we were holding the title in our hand for our shop that we have in Cleveland, the the day that it was officially our building. James and I went in there, and the the ice skating shop was still open. It was still functioning because the people that owned the ice skating shop didn't tell the guy that was working there that he'd sold the building that he'd sold the property. Uh, so the guy, and we'd gone in there and told him, he's like, well, we're giving you a two weeks notice. We gave him a legal two weeks notice of the day we were supposed to transfer title. We said, this is a legal two weeks notice. We sent a notarized copy to the owners and we also posted one on the door at the ice skating shop. And so the day when it was legal and we had our papers, so he was in there at work. He was in there in the ice, ice skate shop. And James and I were like tearing walls out in the other four units of this multi-unit complex. And I was like, well, (laughs) he'll know that we're there when we come through the fucking wall. And we did, and we went through the wall and we went through the wall and the guy was like, what the fuck's going on? I was like, well, you know, this is the day that we told you we were moving in and we weren't lying, we're here today. And the fact that you're not out yet has nothing to do with our plans. And we've decided that we waited this lot, we kept this wall up the longest. The fact that you haven't been moving shit out is madness to me. Yeah, right. And so if you decided that you weren't gonna move shit out, well now the wall's coming down because it's my wall, right? you know? And uh, I decided that my wall decided to come down today. And it was hilarious because he was like, what the fuck am I going to do? And I was like, I, sorry, I, I don't know what you're going to do, but what here's what's going to happen is you're going to either pick your shit up off the floor and get it out of the building or your building's going to get progressively smaller as we tear down walls and take up carpeting. You're like, what's your opinion of bad carburetors? Because that might change your future. If you can fix the bad carburetor, we can talk a little bit. Besides that. <laughs> Aside from that, no. no. Yeah, I, mean, I just need to put my foot down and just give them a hard date. Like, you know yeah. what? I got you this shipping container to put your stuff in. Right. So now you you didn't, you know, you could have put all your stuff in the shipping container, but now you're just using the house now to sell yeah. things out of the house. And I don't want other people in the house. I don't want no. you in the house. I mean, sell it out of your shipping container. Did I mean, he, did he hold a whole your- family of crackheads? <laughs> no, I mean, they're, they're part of the family's not that good, but I mean, she seems, she's taking care of the grandma. I mean, you got to appreciate somebody like you, you're taking care of your mother-in-law. I mean, it's, you give certain people breaks because you know it's hard to do. I mean, that's that's why I feel about it. I mean, your family comes first, so. But really, 
I'm not your family anymore. No, and <laughs> it, it makes sense to just give them a deadline and then just change the locks. Yeah. They cash their, che- they cash your check. Right. right. Yeah. No, I, it's paid for. And I, the deeds in my name and right. I gave them a thing saying they could keep that, the container on the lot for a year. That was very generous. Yeah. No kidding. That, uh, that's, yeah. So, you know, that's fine. And I mean, I was going to tear down the house, but the house is actually, I can't say it because my wife wants me to tear down the house. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty solid. So I'm trying to talk them out of it because I, th- I see the value in the house. And I think like, you know what I mean? If you have just a piece of land, it's worth 30000 Piece of land with an okay house on it, that's 60000 You know, like... Keeping the utilities, keeping the footprint of that is worth doing. Yeah, I get it. And new, you know, because new construction is going to mean permits and all kinds of stuff yeah, where true. that house is is on the property. Now, it could mean like taxes. If you tore it down and you didn't have that square footage, maybe your taxes would go down. No, they won't go down because they're ridiculous. In, in Lorain County, it's so stupid. It's like, okay, I have a lot. With a, it's called backland. So you can't get to it. It's so it's like part of your lot, but it's a separate, it's a separate, um, whatever, a separate lot, but nobody can use it because there's no way to get to it unless you own the front lot. Right. So, like, so it's backland. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to tear down my house and I'm going to, I want to combine my backland with my, my house. How much, what will my taxes be? The same. It's exactly the same. They said, Actually, with the house, you can maybe get the drive down your taxes by saying that the house needs so much in improvements. Right. That it, That's it, you what know, I did. So yeah. then I brought the guy in, and I'm like, hey, look at this house. It's a pile of shit. You know, it's like they raised my taxes like 40000 bucks, and I'm like, just get your ass over here. Go walk through that house and tell me it's worth like what you're telling me. I'm telling you, it's worth exactly what I paid for it. 15 years ago and so you walk through it and he lowered the taxes back down and so this year i'm going to do the same thing for that house i'm going to say walk through this house and when you fall through the floor and the raccoons eat your nuts off <laughs> you can tell me how much it's worth it'll, it will it'll prove its value instantly right so where is where is the the um container castle compared to the house is it further back is it where is it no, the the containers are par- are like bookending the house. One on either side, like okay. this. Okay. And then the the smaller barn is behind, like diagonal behind the house. It's the same one that was there this summer, right? The same thing. The, the little barn. barn, but I put a roof on it. I put some. I put siding on it. I'm waiting to get the hardware parts for like the barn door sliding barn doors. Yeah. And then I'll paint it, and I put a door in, like a man door, so you could you know get in access to it. Yep. And then uh, then the big barn is in the back, and that's being torn down or burned down or somewhat demolished and that's where I'm putting the footprint of the new 40 by 64 pole bar. Well, unbeknownst to you, me and John were planning on going and burning down that barn today, but it was raining too hard. So we, we called it off. <laughs> yeah. oh, I knew. It was benoits to him. It was discussed, but oh. yeah, it was, I would not have wanted to have been out there today. I was outside a lot with my neighbor. He was smoking and I ended up going over and helping him putting a starter in his car but the ground is just like soggy. So yeah, I'm glad that mission got a how does, how does that happen? You walk outside a dude smoking and all of a sudden five minutes later, you're fucking knee deep in his car changing the starter. No, no, he was smoking meat. Oh, okay. so he had his little, he had his, he was smoking some meat. Yeah. And I smelled it and I, uh, and his burned up starter. His <laughs> starter was like burning up. So he's put meat on that starter and started smoking it right there. <laughs> Well, and RJ's, he heard, RJ's a, a, a bit of a fixer-upper boyfriend for me. He uh, didn't have much of a father. He's a you know mid-30s kind of guy, but he's got a wife and a kid over there. So I've been trying to take him under my wing. And this is the second starter I've had to help him put in there. One car blew up and sat on the street for three months. I'm like, do you want me to try to help you with that? Because I can, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so he started this, pro- this starter project two or three months ago. Go, and the car's been sitting there. He broke something. Off. He broke the one little sensor. <laughs> he started. His tire was low. He started filling it about two and a half months yeah. ago, and moved the car. 
<laughs> Do you guys want to hear Patreon uh, messages? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Believe it or not, despite our lack of motorcycle content, we still have people listening to this shit. Or so. Zoom, the Zoomness of this, which is so apolo- apology to all the people listening. We don't really have a lot of control on how good this can sound because it's fucking Zoom, and we hate right. Zoom, and we apologize. So thank yeah, you. It's true. There's the, there's absolutely no control over the sound quality at all. I can yeah. tell you, there's nothing special about the microphone in my laptop that was bought several years ago for like 300 bucks right. <laughs> so we got a i got a message here from michael woods uh michael woods is a patreon member so uh for thank you michael not aware of how the patreon thing works just go to patreon p-a-t-r-e-n uh, e-o-n and you can sign up as a one dollar level which is just like a, a casual observer um you could be called into court as a witness or what have you um at five you're going to be an actual real supporter and at 10 you are a hotline party line member we're going to give you the uh number for my uh hailing device so that you can reach out to us and send us messages and i will receive them like text messages do you want to do you want to divulge the fact that anytime anybody on the ten dollar thing send you a text it shocks my balls yeah well no that was we went for the extra three dollars a month for that Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So for the extra three dollars a month, Steve gets the tingler. Yeah. So that's, the uh, that's the that's the bonus round. So the best but, at three a.m. By the way, the same. It is. And yeah. but the good news is we do get we do get communication. And so what I do is I'm going to read a couple of them because a couple of them are actually really good. And uh, so Michael Woods, I think this is an excellent one. Uh, he would like to comment on us reaching our three hundredth episode a little while ago. And uh, he says, um, "Congratulations on reaching three hundred. I haven't had the opportunity to listen to." it yet but it better not be an election special um he's british michael's british uh anyway hello to everyone there basement cast looking forward to the new grom and tips on waste management trying a new approach here where i have a drink every time you guys do i accept <laughs> the things i cannot change etc but still not going to buy the new Fireblade as the mid-range is worse than my old 2010 bike so yes, that's absolutely right. And uh, Michael, I feel with you because there are plenty of 10 year old motorcycles right now today that are actually technically better than a 2020 or a 2021. And I'm pretty sure the reason they do that is when they hit a high water mark for performance, um, that's the last time they do that. So they get to this perfect point of performance. And then after that, it's all just about making it more profitable or cheaper. So it does. Motorcycles tend to get to that like, oh, this thing is fucking perfect. And then the next 10 years, it's the same bike, but it just gets a little cheaper every year. And well, so that's why we did... We did discuss 10 year old motorcycles in our podcast because they can be a tremendous value and the performance can be exceptional. Or they can be a Suzuki DR650, which once again for 2021 has been released with bold new graphics and nothing more. Don't buy a new DR. Do not buy a new DR650 under any circumstances. It's the same fucking motorcycle, man. And I love, again, bold new graphics. Well, that's the thing. If you really wanted the new one, you could probably buy the plastic for cheaper and just put it on your 1984 DR650 and have a brand new bike. And have a much yeah, better experience. But the selling point is still there. It is a brand new 650cc bike for six thousand and six hundred dollars. Exactly. And you can fix it. In any that, point. motherfuckers. They, they didn't have it, to change it. The cheap ass motherfuckers will buy that. And you can fix it in any corner of the world because. Even a dude that last bought parts in 1991 can still fit the parts to your fucking motorcycle now right. in 2021. So, right. yeah. but an XL, I mean, you can make the same argument for an XL 650. Right? True. Same you argument for yeah, same thing. It's no, never changed. It's the same bike. It's the, almost the same price. It's gone up by about 50 bucks a year <laughs> over the last 20, 10, 20, 20 years. Yeah, when a friend of mine bought a brand new um, XL. 650 or XR650L. Mm-hmm. Um, the L stands for lame. The when he bought that bike, he bought it brand new in like 2016 or 2017. And I was just like, are you not aware of the fact that you could have bought that exact same motorcycle with 3000 miles on it for one third as much money? Right. And every part is still interchangeable. And he's like, and- well, I didn't buy that. I bought a $5,000 motorcycle that will get me back and forth to work every single day for the next five years. And I'm not going to have to put a penny into it. And he's absolutely right. 
I don't know about the one third price. That's the only thing I'm going to say because for, you don't find them. I mean, I constantly look for dual sports. I look for XR 650 L's and you rarely find one for under four grand. I mean, I don't care how, you know, if it has a ton of miles on it, then yeah, maybe you'll get it down to like three grand or 2,500, but they're hard to find. Yeah. Some guy's trying to sell a CRF 250L for like 4,500 bucks on, on <laughs> Craigslist. I'm like, what world did you come from? Right. So Mike, Mike follows up, uh, Mike Woods follows up by saying, marketing, the definition of marketing is making you unhappy with your life so that you buy somebody else's. And I was like, <laughs> that's fantastic. Ah, uh, well done. Fucking great. So right. he said, uh, so that's what he said. He's looking at the changing laws in Europe and he thinks that his next new motorcycle will be an electric. Uh, because he said from now on, he's only going to buy secondhand Japanese motorcycles. Um, or if he's going to buy a brand new, he's probably going to buy electric. Well, that's so. the thing that beats all like, so all these European places that are cracking down with emissions, yeah. You can beat all of it and still have a gnarly bike by buying an electric. Done. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Phil, do you know if Ohio charges you that 200 bucks on a zero? No, not on a zero. So, okay. yes. And so people that are buying electric vehicles should be aware of the fact that in many states, there is what's called a, a road use tax. If you're buying an electric vehicle, like an electric car, and you go to get your license plates, instead of your license plates being 70 bucks, they might be 270 bucks because you're paying a $200 penalty because you don't buy gas at the gas station and therefore pay to support those roads at, with your gas tax. Now, this is problematic on many levels. The first problem with this is they're assuming that I would purchase $200 worth of tax on gas, right? So they're just assuming that if I were to go out today and buy a Ford Fiesta, um, if this sounds fresh, it's because Dr. Waters and I argued about this last night. Um, if I were to go out to, tomorrow and buy a Ford Fiesta that gets 40 miles to the gallon, and I were to drive it back and forth to my work, and I were to put the same kind of miles on that Ford Fiesta that I put on one of my motorcycles, would I be using, you know, $3,000 worth of gas? Would I be using, you know, whatever the amount of gas I would have to buy to pay $200 worth of tax? They're making a wild assumption that every person that purchases an electric vehicle would be putting the kind of use on the road that would equal a $200 additional reach into your pocket. And it's well, also the highest also, order. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead. But also, you're looking at a 300 pound vehicle versus a 2,000 pound vehicle. So, you know, you're wearing the road out uh, quite a bit more. 100%. You're absolutely right about that. But on top of that, when you have an electric vehicle, you're plugging into something, right? And whatever you're plugging into, that electricity came from a source that most likely has paid taxes somewhere on their property, on their whatever. On all tax on your electricity. Right. So you're being taxed twice. Twice. So exactly. But that's perfectly fine. You don't understand. We've been double and triple and quadruple taxed out. To, uh, the, you pay income tax, you pay sales tax, and yep. you're taxed on top of your tax on top of your tax. So it's perfectly normal to over, you know, the double, triple tax. The triple perfect tax. example of that, which I'm sure Phil knows every in and out of, is the fact that you pay taxes on a used vehicle, which has already been paid sales tax on, and you pay. How many times, how many vehicles have you had in your shop that have been sold 10 times, and yet they're oh, still yeah. paid tax on the vehicle? 10 times if it sells 10 times, you know, right. the vehicle has 10, 10 owners. That's 10 times. It generates money for the state. Right. And, you know, it capital is gains. I'm looking at maybe getting hit with capital gains tax. And it's like, but wait a minute. What did, what did the city of Cleveland, what did any, what did this federal government do to make the house that I bought and fixed up any more profitable? Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't contribute anything to it. And, you know, if you get hit with property gains at the low end, it's 19%. Right. At the high end, it goes up to like 37%. Like they would take 37% of your gains on an investment or on a property. If, that if the 19% bothers you, don't you dare open a business. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's what I can, I can tell you that. That's, that's a really quick one for you. If 19% capital gains bothers you, there is no room for your, your mindset in being an entrepreneur or being a small business owner because no. it is maddening. And uh, it is, it's a very awkward, it's a very difficult thing. So what I, 
about that, though, check with your state's laws, because I can tell you that in the state of Ohio, we do not. So in the state of Ohio, we don't pay on motorbikes. So, yes, if you have a car, then you're going to pay. If you have an electric car, that's going to cost you. Um, in which case, I would recommend getting an LLC and then getting your motor vehicle, like getting a dealer license and getting like uh, dealer plates and maybe having, you know, nine or ten dealer plates and putting them on everything. But I don't know anybody who's ever done that. <laughs> you need to help me with that. <laughs> <laughs> but then you'll accidentally open a motorcycle shop. So that's, that's bad, bad. right? <laughs> so the, oh, a museum. <laughs> <laughs> that's, now that's the better ah, idea. That's yeah. good, dude. Yeah, yeah. The, the, and I, you, there's also the in transit plates. I'd recommend those too. So you just, I'm not driving it, I'm relocating it. Right. Yeah. In, so, yeah, so in Ohio, when you t- when you have a trailer that you're moving, you can actually just write in transit on a piece of paper and put it on the back. Right? There are some pretty there are some pretty sketchy laws on trailers. Right, right. Trailers as a whole are fucking. There's a whole weird world about trailers. Um, if you ever want to feel good about yourself, read the laws that you have to qualify for the 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 standards you have to meet to become a trailer dealer in the state of Ohio. Um, if you walk upright, you have reached the criteria. Are you currently of, breathing in the state of Ohio? And that means you get, uh, uh, you know, temporary, you get uh, dealer plates for the trailers. So, right. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of an interesting thing, but that's the easiest way to become a literally a motor vehicle dealer and become to start by being a trailer dealer. Yeah. Harvard's like, oh, oh I need, trailer's opening tomorrow. <laughs> I need a few like dealer we plates. I mean, they would solve all my problems. A few yeah. dealer plates, dealer they would plates. solve all, everything. Yeah. Dealer plates is a really good thing. And the uh, it is also funny when we see the people who are skating through the law and we see people that are like, okay, well, I'm going to have a 45-day plate on this car because I know I can't get it through e-check. And then I'm going to sign it over to my nephew and then he's going to have a 45 day plate on it, but I'm still driving it. And then I'm going to sign it over to my wife and I get another 45 day plate on it. And, you know, so you can keep a vehicle going in perpetuity, never getting actual hard plates for it, never actually getting a real title for it and just, you know, hand the thing along every 45 days. And again, if you think people don't do that, you haven't been looking around real hard when you're driving down the road. Well, I don't know why they don't have a, a, a class for, like, say, like with, with you or I, we have, well, you have more bikes than me, but say you have 20 bikes. Yeah. You can't ride 20 bikes. No, and in uh, different states, so Oscar, I think, will tell you, isn't it in, Milwaukee, in Wisconsin, Oscar, where you get a collector vehicle plate? And you get a collector vehicle plate, and it says like your your click your collector vehicle plate would be like, you know, A B C, or you have one two three, and then in front of it you get a number of how many plates you have. So you could have you know your main plate number would be one two three, but then in front of that you'd have small numbers that would say like O O one, and O O two and O O three, and you pay for one registration because you have but one ass. Right. You know. And that's the idea. So collector vehicle would be like, you're, you're only can be operating one at a time. Yeah. So, but yet you have the plates to go on as many as you like. Yeah. I don't get it. Cause then I'd love to just get blanket insurance too. Just, of course, yeah. you know, cause really the liability is what they gig you on. Everything else is cheaper. Mm-hmm. So your, your liability is only on one vehicle. Mm-hmm. So, so true. Yeah. But I think that's why, like, I mean, I know for me, if it, with through Progressive, which is where I'm going, and you can put up to five bikes on one policy, but adding a bike or taking a bike off almost doesn't change the price. Doesn't change and I think price. that's kind of the reason, because they know you can only ride one at a time. Progressive you know? went And I also think it's, it's stupid that you can only put five on it, because after five, they want you to open a second policy and put five more on it, and then so you're going to be paying, you know, more again so i don't know i just insure with them i insure you know five of different bikes that i'm going to ride i can call them and switch that at any point that i want and you know yeah. no problem i insure one honda one yamaha one kawasaki one you know moto guzzi and so you just move the plate around and that's it the uh nobody will check the vin right that's what that's what for scooters if you have a scooter and you have multiple scooters Cops think of it as a scooter. It's a scooter. <laughs> that's it. Like, Might as well just say scooter on the title, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's neat? So my wife changed her insurance policy recently. I don't even know what company we're with anymore, but whatever. But they actually take into the account that we live in Ohio. 
So my motorcycle rates for all my bikes and scooters and stuff are like one thing from, I don't know, March until yeah. September. And then it goes to like $7 a month for their yeah, other. They're prorating it. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they did that because a lot of people used to cancel their insurance. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'm not paying insurance for December, January. So they just like, well, okay, let's not deal with this foolishness. Right. We'll just give you this little minimum fee so that, you know, it doesn't, people aren't continuously churning their insurance. Well, right. that's I'm gonna like go a brainless my motorcycles. I'm going to put all my motorcycles, in my wife's name, because her birthday is, you know, November 18th. And so I wouldn't want to ride after then anyway. Right. So then all the plates expire on November 18th. And then I just don't renew them until May. And then I get six months for free. Cause I asked the lady at the BMV to prorate them. Right. You know, it, <laughs> that used to be the way that you do it. So you didn't have to pay insurance. And also you would pay half as much for your plates. Right. So, you know, there was a lot of that going on. It's like, I would never do it with mine because my birthday's in June and it's just the time to ride. My plates are all expiring, you know? So yeah, but that's a, that's a common thing. People do that shit. But it's pretty interesting how they can like they can maneuver stuff like during the summer, you're more concerned about, you know, uh, accidents and whatever. And in the winter in Ohio, you're more concerned about like fire or theft yeah. or something Absolutely. like that. So they kind of convert the whole policy to riding to like storing. And it's kind of cool. And they don't want you to go without insurance because they don't want you to forget to renew it in the, right. on the downside and lose a customer. Right. So they just keep you around. It's better for them. Yep. So Andrew Taylor, another podcast mm-hmm. listener, uh, one of our Patreon supporters, he said, episode 306 was amazing. Um, <laughs> you need to make the hobo Christmas story lamp out of that leg for the shop window. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. So, so if you guys know, I mean, if you didn't see the leg, we've got a human leg or a prosthetic leg from a well, really none of us guy. knew. None of us knew until you pulled it out. That was yeah, it's amazing. a really big leg. And so my wife awesome. thought that was the most disgusting thing ever. <laughs> Especially when I told her we'll probably be drinking out of it after a while. She was like, "You disgust me." Oh my god. <laughs> You guys are weird. <laughs> so I think that that idea, I think the idea of wiring that thing and plumbing it to be a proper leg lamp, uh, that is the most, that is the most Cleveland answer for a Cleveland thing. Yeah. You know, the Elon leg and everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we'll have the Cleveland answer to a Cleveland thing. So the it's got to have the right shade. I just don't know. The shade should be like a, a cutoff pair of old man's beer can jeans. <laughs> that was so in this discussion, I was thinking about exactly that. So I said, is the perfect shade a pair of uh, jorts, you know, like uh, <laughs> what, what guys would wear at mid Ohio yeah. or, uh, you know, or would the perfect shade be the 1981 nylon white workout uh, shorts with the red piping? Oh yeah, because okay, it's got yeah. you know it's a it's a sports shoe with a big tall white sock on it. Yeah. So yeah. then if it had like those red nylon jogging shorts with the white piping around it, that would be appropriate too. But yeah, so I, um, I don't know exactly what we're gonna do for the shade on this badass. But there I'm was a time excited. when they had what were called coaches shorts. Yes, coaches shorts. Yeah. Coaches shorts. I think that's where it's at. But coaches okay. shorts would be a good thing too. I think chaps. <laughs> oh no wait a second that would be ultimately the worst garment yeah. ever is chaps shorts <laughs> i think i think you should like take the top of it and put a vajankle on it so that you have oh yeah put like drop put, a flashlight into it yeah so it's like a vajankle <laughs> <at the top>. <laughs> right <laughs> just <laughs> just make the flashlight the knee yeah. <laughs> In case anybody wants to be intimate with your leg, it's a terrible idea. But anyway, so that thanks to Andrew, Tra- Andrew Taylor. Um, p- that's a patron right there is going to get his fucking money worth because I believe we're actually going to do this. Yes. So it would be a pretty, pretty easy project for me to turn that freaking leg into a leg lamp. Right. I couldn't be happier about that. That's freaking awesome. That's good. Uh, that that's badass. <clears throat> so I got one more for you. Um, Hey, Phil and crew, I just wanted to thank you for the years of entertainment and two-wheeled insight you've shared. I still use the lighter trick on the car bowl every time I try to start my XR650L after it sits for too long. The prob- hey, the he's part of the gang we just talked about. He's part of the whole 650 crew. Exactly. Okay, okay so here we go. 
<clears throat> the problem you answered for my son about the shop having a Supermoto YZ450 motor for months has been resolved, and he got to ride it for a few months. Unfortunately, a crackhead type needed his YZ450 more than he did, and his bike disappeared one night. But he got the insurance money, and he's already shopping for a KTM 500 EXC. And we understand and what he says is you and i both know he's going to become part of the keep throwing money at it crowd because that's what ktm stands for is keep throwing money <laughs> after he gets it but whatever as liza would say it's his up the butt bike so whatever i'm just glad he's old enough and i'm not the one buying the parts anymore so keep up the good work and i'm sure i'll have questions for you about my junk at some point i do have a bell ulysses as part of my fleet so i know there's bound to be something that will come up I know if I was a wise man, I'd sell it while it's still running, but it's still growing strong after 38,000 miles. So it's an entertaining science experiment at this point, and I will keep riding it until it grenades. And that's from Greg Childs. So right on, Greg Childs, you're absolutely right. The fact that your son has got a KTM 500, yeah, that's gonna... And, and Greg Childs, uh, in regards to your junk, um, as long as it's not dripping anything green, <laughs> and it doesn't hurt to pee. You're fine. Your junk's okay. Continue. Yeah, you're fine. Your, your junk's fine. Yep. Yeah, keep it away from Chris's Janus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right, right now, guys. I just let you know that we are right now in the month of January. January. <laughs> January. So we're in the month of January, which is named for Janus. Ah, yeah. Uh. So this is one of the months that was added to the calendar. Uh, watch the history guy. The history, the history guy uh, on YouTube will tell you um, his latest episode today is all about how we went from a ten-month calendar to a twelve-month calendar, and how that wasn't really enough to fix the problem. And but it is funny that the two months that were added, this is one of the months that was added, named after Janus. So yeah. Hmm. So there you go. It's the perfect month for a Janus. What is going on there, Steve? That's an 11% something. I don't yeah, know. 11%. Yeah, the dragon's milk. Uh, Everyone likes a good dragon's milk. That's what happens. Mike got me that today for making me making him help me with my forks. Now, that's something. You go to use his garage and his tools, and he buys you beer? Yeah, that's the way it works, man. That's crazy. fucking good, right? Yeah. He's really out of the, yeah, he's really out of the game for a minute. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, so that's that is one of the things that I do love and, and I do miss is the camaraderie of being able to go and work and work on somebody's bike together or getting people at the shop and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I, I do. I do really miss that so much. But here we are. We're making the best with what we can in these six little screens we have going on here. You know, right. That's about what you can do. The uh, anybody have any news on anything else that's been fucking canceled that we need, need to know about? Because, yeah, Isla Man's done. That's that's out. A lot of other shit's being canceled already. That's it. Punk Rock Bowling. They still won't admit Punk Rock Bowling's going to be shut down because they might actually have to give people their money back. And I think well, we all know the IMS shows are no longer happening where they were like we're yeah, they're happening, but they're happening in different cities yep. than they were before. So if you used to have an IMS show, check the schedule. You might not anymore. Well, think about it. We'd be right now. We'd be talking about what we're going to do in two weeks at the Cleveland oh, of course. IMS show. Oh. And now that's not happening at all. Right. Normally, right now, this time of the year, I would be negotiating with them and getting our space lined up and getting, you know, figuring out what bikes were going to be there. And we'd be going through a lot of shit right now. So, yeah. So that's something that's totally going to change for us here is our that's our big end of January event. That shit ain't happening. So. Nope. Yeah. I had uh, something that I saw and I don't know if you guys are seeing it. I just sent a, te a text message link. Did you see the new Royal Enfield promotional video? I no. have not. You might want to check. It's uh, on, I'm working on it. Give me a right. I sent you a text message with the link if you wanted to. I mean, yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's yeah, up or yeah. whatever. Yeah, I mean, bring it up. I, part of me makes me want to spit up in my mouth, but the other part of me says this is really the kind of marketing yeah. that motorcycle companies should be doing especially for something like a Royal Enfield, but like maybe Harley, you know, like, because you can really tell that they're trying to tap into the younger hipster tattooed culture. I mean, it's, it's a, I don't know if it wasn't 
if the guy wasn't trying to drag a hand, you'll see it in the video. He's not getting a knee down. He's literally reaching down and touching yeah. the road. Right. I would, yeah, I might have been more impressed, but yeah. I remember, know. those tattooed bearded hipsters are in their mid 40s right now. Yeah, maybe they got along enough that they've got a decent job, and now they're looking to, like, you know what? I need to reinvent myself. I need to do yeah. something cool. Yeah. All, right. all, the, all the tattooed bearded hipsters, all those guys are in their mid 40s right now, and they do represent some legit buying power. All right, let's check it out. You ready? I'm ready. Turn up them speakers. Sun shines on And the wind is cold Yeah, it's calling me I'm just keeping us from getting demonetized Oh yeah, yeah, that's fair Trying to keep it slow and breezy Flowing easy Oh yeah, look at her. Oh yeah. Cool. Oh, they're switching lanes. They're switching lanes. Well, you know, and it is nice that they shot this in California. Yeah. And they were sure to have a woman oh, riding by oh, the there it was. Yeah. So they have a, a woman on the back, but they also made sure they had a woman riding her own bike, you know. So yeah. whether you want to be on the back of the bike or whatnot. They're, they're really they, stressing the cornering clearance that you can have when you have really long arms. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fuck, fuck any kind of protection. Who gives no, a fuck? No, he was wearing finger pucks. I saw you, that. You can always get new tattoos, so that's fucking, who cares, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. They end up, now they're picking up their buddy. Oh, watch oh. this. You'll love this. Okay. He's got his surfboard. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah right on. Yeah. Uh -huh. they, they totally called him just to make sure he jetted out in front of him, too. Yeah. That's a Royal. Oh, now they're on sand. That's easy to ride. They're cool. Yeah. That's a Royal Enfield part number SB101. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, drifting on the sand. Yeah. He's drifting. He's not really drifting. <laughs> I mean, they really are kind oh, of captured. Oh, 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 you know he gave that away. That was Phil. <laughs> Phil was like, I disapprove of this. I'm in my RV, and this is very disapproving. Yeah. Oh, see, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. These young hooligans. But you know what? It's fun, though, because what it shows you is, like, you can go out and act like an ass and dump your bike and still be friends, right? Oh, you're all tattooed. I this truck. part at all. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, now it's daylight again. So it got night. Now no, it's they day. slept on the beach because they're cool. Oh, right, right, right. With none of their gear. There you go. What does it say? Easy got back. Yeah. yeah. Easy yeah. got back. That's and weird. California is calling in case you're wondering about. Okay. Well, there you have it, man. So I mean, I, I feel like it was at least a pretty good effort of making a pretty decent marketing video. I mean, for younger people and yeah. making it look fun and making giving it a whole lifestyle thing. Absolutely. Better than most people are doing. The I want to stand on a beach and have somebody spit sand in my face from the well, back wheel. <laughs> the proof that that worked, though, is Nick went and bought a Royal Enfield yesterday. So congratulations. Uh, oh, he did? No, I'm kidding. But that just he gonna... might. He might. I'm just saying. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, Cam would, though. Definitely. Has, anybody gotten yeah. to, has you gotten to ride the new Interceptors, either the Continental or the the 650? I mean, what yeah, was the I've impression? Got, I've got a customer that has. Uh, I've got a customer that has the new uh, Interceptor. You know, has the new the new 650, and uh, then also uh, Larry, a friend of ours, bought one. Yeah, I knew that. His overheated on the way home from the shop. Yikes! So, <laughs> A guy who's been a guy who's been wrenching on Triumph motorcycles his entire life and owned a Triumph shop where he built award-winning Triumphs and just said, "I just want a bike that looks old, but is modern and totally reliable, and I wanted to fuck with it." And he didn't want to pay new Triumph prices, and he's kind of ethically against the new Triumphs because he's an old Triumph guy. Yeah. So he will only have that, but he's like, well, at least the Royal Enfield doesn't pretend it's British when it's actually from India. So he went and bought a brand new Enfield 650, and in the process of riding it home, um, it cooked itself. And so it cooked itself, and it shut down on the freeway. And then he, he got it back home, and he, he took it to the house, and he kind of had a look at it and was like, well, you know, this is a failure. This is an absolute failure. And so the company said, well, you know, we'll, we'll take care of it. We'll do the warranty work on it for you and make it all right. And he said, okay, great. He says, so you're going to send a truck to my shop you're going to send a truck to my house and pick it up. And they were like, well, no, no, you're going to have to get it here. And so Larry said, oh, okay, I'll just ride it back then. 
And they were like, yeah, do what you got to do. That's great. <laughs> I was like, okay. You got a W-800. Why don't you just buy a W-800? <laughs> so, but, okay, but my question, though, is yeah. you rode one. What is it like? It's not. I mean... I've also written the, I've also written the W I've also written the W so mm -hmm. I I like the W better I think the W is a better bike um, I think that the Enfield is at least fifty percent better than the old five hundreds were and John and I know intimately how bad yeah, the five hundred that was my big question is is, yeah. is this uh, I mean you know the twin you would like to think it's a little better it's nowhere yeah. near a Triumph I'm assuming like it's not you're not going to rev it it's not going to do a hundred and some miles an hour ever and it, but is it the least better? Is it a little better than the single? It is, though? It is so much better than a 500. So much better than a 500. But it is nowhere near a T100, which is the cheapest Triumph, right? Right. So you compare it to a T100. Um, the T100 is better. I mean, the T100 is, is faster. It has more power. It pulls stronger. It feels better put together. Um, the Enfield is the best Enfield I've ever ridden in my life, without a doubt. It's it's fantastic for an Enfield. But I have to see the words for an Enfield. Right. right. Yeah. You're not buying it to compare it against other Enfields. Right. I believe the retail price is under seven thousand. They are so cheap; it's ridiculous. I mean, but yeah. riding that bike in one of the um, TNTs that you sell, the three hundred or whatever, yeah. what would you buy? Oh, there. If you know, and I have ridden the the TNT uh, six hundred, but I would also. I mean, it feels, and that thing feels like it's cut from one piece of metal. The TNT six hundred feels like it's legitimately better than a Japanese bike. It feels tight. I mean, it's crazy how good that bike feels, but that's the, the biggest thing. If somebody comes along and says, okay, well, if you're looking for that kind of a bike, if you want a bike that if you squint, you can get fooled into thinking it's an old British bike. Right. Well, you're either going to be like, I'm just, you know, I'm when the whole market zigs, I'm going to zag. And that's why I want a Royal Enfield because I don't want to triumph. That's great. That's cool. I hope you, I, you're probably going to love it. It's going to be a great bike for you because it is going to be better than the fucking 500. And I honestly think they should stop selling the 500. I think the 500, it, it represents a nightmare and I've, we've never had a good one. You know, it's a nightmare in America because we ride again, like we've said a million we times, fast. we ride them too hard, too yeah. fast on the highway. But well, they're always going to sell them because in India, they still make a lot of sense. So they're making it. Yeah. They've already gone through the hassle of being able to import it here. It'll be available whether people buy it or not. And I can't imagine that. I mean, I think Royal Enfield sales have gone through the floor, haven't they? Like, do they even still sell? I mean, are there any published numbers of what they actually still sell now? No, but no. I, I think they're probably they're probably benefiting from COVID like a lot of people are. Mm. Uh, well, let me put it this way. So here's what what can marketing dollars during COVID do for you, right? Right. And there's not a lot of people out doing anything right now, especially riding in the winter months for us northern folks and people that have winter. So what can marketing dollars do for you? Let me show you. Let me share this real quick. Well, I could say well-timed marketing dollars. If we get another $2,000 stimulus or something, it could do a lot. <laughs> well, well, let me put it this way. So think about this for a second. Some of these, I'm going to show you a list. And this is, I, I checked about seven different websites. And this is, can, it's the same on all seven websites. So this is not something that's like just this website. And today is, January 1st. So this is the first year of 2020 or right. 2021. Yep. And so this is the top 13 electric motorcycles of 2021. Okay. okay. Today is the first day of it. It's day one. Day one. Okay. okay. And this is not unique to this website. So let me go ahead and pull this up. Okay. Here you go. Larry, what, what do you Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what am I looking at here? Wow. Um, I that's that's fantastic considering the bike they call the overall best is the one that you can't ride right now because it's under warranty. Right. It's under recall. So, so the zero SRF, which yeah. we like has like Phil, how many miles can, can uh, I can't think of the word cumulatively yeah. do you think the SRF has under a it? lot. I mean a lot. It's it's a like it's how many a, thousand times more than the Harley? It's a lot. It's it's right. because there there are a lot more zero SRFs out there in the world. There's more produced. There's a higher production number. Okay, more people bought them. And what is this? What is this? Again, I don't even. 
I don't I know what this is. That's what it, it's shocking to me because I don't even know what it is. Um, the 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 next one on the line. I don't even think you can actually buy that bike. Uh, if you do look at Brandon's uh, Brendan's uh, watch Brendan Nozaki Miller's YouTube channel, and he'll bring you up to speed on the number four bike. Well, here uh, let's do. Let's how ridiculous this all is. Like, what is this? Hold on. I don't that one. You're gonna again. It's something I don't even know exists. And yet they're deeming it as one of the top thirty. That, that okay, is- so now go back, and I want to. I want to say, <laughs> tell you the category that they gave it was best in varied terrain. So you're going to say that that GoGo Row 50 cc replacement scooter is better in mud than a Zero FX. Oh my! <laughs> right? Come on! This man. is not unique to this site. This has been no. copied by twenty five sites today. Exactly, and this is this big thing. When you get to something like that, like the fuel flow down there, that's not you can't even buy that yet. That's, what is this? What is this fucking thing? It's one of these. It's this is a Chinese fucking Grom. I was going to say that's an SSR Rascal with yeah. with an electric motor in it. Right is what that and, is. And what is this? This is the best. What is this thing? Hold on. I don't know, dude. This is just, it, it, this is just, insulting. this is what marketing can do for your company. Yeah. Is, like you well, have shame on whoever, shame on the, whoever wrote this. Well, but here's the thing you sell right. these, you sell electric motorcycles, you know right. what sells and what doesn't sell. Oh, yeah. And most of this list, which is like if you type in 2021 electric motorcycles best, you're going to get some variation of this fucking list. It's, and it ridiculous. Fucks, it's ridiculous. It, it is ridiculous. What is that even? Best tech for lovers. Yeah, best, <laughs> best number for ten. Lovers. <laughs> the tar form. That that is the right tar form. Now wait a second. <laughs> yeah. Now, wait a second. It's made from parts that have most have been three D printed. So you're telling me it's not mass produced. It's literally individually printed by three D printers. And they're upcycled from kombucha bottles. <laughs> What is, are you kidding me? It literally says that the rest of the parts are upcycled from kombucha derived leather and pineapple leaf fibers. You have got to be kidding me. But I want to know again, simple thing, go down this list and just tell me how many of those you can buy. Yeah. Right. Like how many of these exist? Right. Well, hey, just, just, just the fact that a, a top down list. Right. Has a different company for each that's, of them is a red that's another thing flag. that they should worry you for because i was going to say that's there's bullshit that you don't have at least a, at least two there or are three six zeros zero. that do better in any one of these categories than the bike they have show up there right the lightning strike is not the no best way. budget <laughs> no, no. are they serious <laughs> yeah the lightning strike is not the best budget not by a long shot no well, this so. cult, the cult which is best commuter just yeah. 28 miles an hour and has a range of 60 kilometers. Yeah, exactly. So this is worthless. So this website is a really good example of marketing. It's just what a marketing nightmare this is. But that's is, that's the problem. So here's the thing. This is what I this is why I brought this up. Yeah. So as a guy who is as a job, I deal in marketing currently right. and, and things, I see how we can manipulate everything. So it's really oh, yeah. interesting to see how these people are manipulating the facts when you feel that yeah. several electric bikes have oh. actual facts and actual like tangent, like input on this. Yeah. And so it's not just like, Hey, you know, Phil sells Ducatis and he has a slight knowledge of electric bikes. Like you have intimate knowledge. You've been brought out to all these different companies that are actually big deals to try and ride these bikes. And yet, only three of those that I know that you've talked about are on this list. And the rest are like, what the fuck is this? It might as well be nothing. You know what I mean? It's across the board though, because I was looking for a small outboard for my, uh, uh, for my sailboat. I wanted like okay. a, you know, like a two horsepower Honda or like a three horsepower, like what Nissan or something. And they said the 10, so I went to like 20 different websites and they must all be right, written by the chai cams because it says like who flung poo is like the the t- best the best ten top uh, small upwards are made by who flung poo. Yeah. I mean, you go to ten different websites and they're all the same like Kang Jang uh, outboard, and it looks like something that uses um. It's got a, a cheap, like a horribly cheap looking two stroke motor on it 
with like aluminum tubing that you knew if you put it on your boat, it would break in, in five minutes. If you try to turn it in high seas or anything, it would snap okay. right off. Right. It looked like a conduit, it looked like an electrical conduit that they made into an outboard motor. Right. So, so it has a speedo cable drive. Yeah. yeah. No, there's something like that. I mean, it's right here. You're right. It's probably like a weed whacker with a, you know, with a propeller on it. But I mean, these Chinese marketing companies just get all these websites and just populate it with their crap. Yep. So, I mean, you don't even know what's good anymore. Well, here's the very interesting thing. So just to show you how incredibly awful that that list that Steve just brought up and showed us is how terrible it is. The number three bike on there is the arc vector. Now, the reason I, I know nothing about it and I don't know anything at all about the arc vector is I, when I see vaporware or something comes up and it's vaporware, I just immediately fucking shove it out of the way. I give no time to it at all because in the past five years, there's been a hundred companies that have said they're going to build an electric motorcycle, you know, and just like there's 15 electric pickup trucks that are coming out. Right. And every day, another one disappears. So the arc vector, um, whatever category that was listed in doesn't matter. It's, it was $117,000. For Back one change. Okay. $117,000. It had less power than the zero SRF. It has the same top speed as the zero SRF. It has the same zero to 60 speed as the zero SRF. Hold on. Let me tell you something about marketing. When they announced the live wire, when the live wire was first announced, they came up with a bunch of specs for the live wire and then zero launched its SRF. And when zero launched its SRF, the next day, Harley Davidson gave its live wire all new specs. <laughs> that were just a little bit better than the zeros. Okay? <laughs> and it's very funny that when you look at the arc vector, its numbers are all exactly the same as the zeros, except for the price, which is $117,000. Now, here's the crazy thing. Do you know how many of those arc vectors you can buy? Yep. Goose egg. None. Not a fucking one. The company's in fucking receivership right now. OK, um, this company, as of the writing of that article right now, today, you can Google it, look up the story. Um, their website is alive and well and producing vaporware in huge, huge quantities. But the biggest thing you can't do is you can't fucking buy one. Mm -hmm. OK, you just can't do it. And they've been talking about um, this 399 is they wanted to, it's a 399 volt system. It's not a 106 volt system. It's a 399 volt system. So they wanted to produce 399 of them. Let me tell you what they haven't done so far is they haven't produced 399 of them. Um, they haven't produced any of them as far as I can tell. And if there is somebody that has bought one now, of course, these things will all give you the ability to make a deposit on one. Right. <laughs> But you can't buy one, right? That's that's a fact. And I love that. Our first model is limited to 399 units with our first deliveries starting in the summer of 2020. Okay. Well, I have not seen one of these appear in anything or any show or any dealer launch or anything else. I do not know who the first owner is of the Arc Vector, right? But this is just a point like that, that marketing thing had given you the impression they'd already sit on one, they'd already tested one, they'd reviewed it. And they said that it was the number three choice of those 20 motorcycles, right? On a lot of different websites too, oh, not just one. They well, that's because a lot of money. And shame on all the people who pick that up. So shame on the people who take that and regurgitate it and shoot it back out on their website because they're dying for content and they don't check the facts, you know, fuck them. You know, that's bullshit. And that's, and that's exactly it. And that's why we get people calling the store going, so do you have that new arc vector? Right. <laughs> well, you're talking about something that even major news networks do the same thing. I mean, they'll, they'll sit yeah. there and they'll do it. There'll be a whole news article about something that happened on TikTok. Right. And then they'll report all the, they'll literally copy it over and they'll copy over all the reactions and they'll comment on it. Like, holy fuck. I mean, why don't you just put the link up to that fucking the original TikTok video? And <laughs> it's crazy. It's well, lazy, you know, man. It's, it's lazy. awesome. And it's yeah. crazy when you see like these, there's a couple of YouTube things where they take all the local, the local evening news 
and they, they put like a certain day together and you realize how there is some kind of a central news agency because every single local news is like today right. things went south when the duck boarded a boat and quacked weirdly. And it's like, it's not even something that they can get happen by coincidence. It's like this weird story that just every single fucking news thing is, is saying. And it's like, when, when you see that, you're like, okay, cool. But when you actually think about it as an advertising, you're like, wow, there is no fucking independent thought. Nobody's doing a real review except right. for a few people. It's mostly just here. Here's the easy fucking things you can feed to your fucking viewers and get fucking likes and clicks and do whatever. And we'll take all the hard work away from you. All you have to do is say that this fucking product is cool. I'm done. Yeah. And yeah. you know what I'm going to tell you? You know who's guilty of it? I, I love this. I love this outlet, Motorcycle Consumer News, MCN out of England. I love them. I just think they're great, but they're fucking guilty of it because you know what they got on their, their front page today? They got here are the most important electric motorbikes coming in 2020, and 2021, wire. you know, and they've got that same list, but they're kind of rejiggered. They got them in a different order. There's yep. just says <laughs> and here's you get the top and then BMW and Damon and Zap and it goes down. And you know what? It's like. Are, are any of those things, I mean, granted, at least on this one, 60% of the bikes that are listed are legit and you can sit on them or at least there's a prototype somewhere. Right, but right. realistically, when you look at like the RMK E2 and that kind of thing, you know, these are all people that's their biggest news announcement is they hope to produce 4,000 bikes a year by 2025. Right, well, right. But you haven't produced any, right? Right. So that's bit that's the whole thing is well oh, they three D printed one so I mean right. exactly good right. so, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and I guess Nick just texted that that Royal Enfield he he said that's a neat ad <laughs> I'm like oh we got you Nick <laughs> I got you perfect I told you his ass was gonna buy one they nailed the millenniums he I said like if I do this right. I can surf that's what he was thinking the whole time yeah, yeah. but that other Royal Enfield ad that uh, for the the racer was it the interceptor? No, what was that? Oh, one that was the Continental ad? GT. The Continental GT. That was a good. That was a good ad. I mean, that, I thought that ad was pretty cool. It was a good ad. It was a bad bike. No, I'm not saying the bike was good, but I mean, it seems like Royal Enfield's got a good ad agency. I mean, they yeah. produce a kind of a. You know, an interesting yeah. ad. I mean, they use Don Draper. I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> <Don Draper. laughs> All right. Well, so, and this is another thing, too. I, I want 2021, if I can look forward to 2021 in any way, what I want to do is I want to do, I want to make fact checking sexy. Yeah. That's my goal. I want to make like integrity. I want to make personal integrity the sexiest coolest thing there is dude it said it it said college humor had a thing where they had somebody saying something and yeah. then they had a live fact checker yeah so the well, guy's like blah 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 on that thing mm -mm, mm -mm. well but more importantly in this industry like you said you just held up something and i looked at something you held up something that was obviously written by an idiot Right. Okay. There was somebody who just grabbed the name of 15 electric motorcycles and put them in order right. and, and, and sprayed it out onto the internet because now he can say that his thing was reposted 9 million times. And, and somehow the, first, gonna, the first one to put it up. And right. somehow that's going to equate to more dollars in his account somewhere. Right. right. And right. that's bullshit. I mean, that's, that's ultimately crap. Feeding somebody bad information is just, it should be punishable. I mean, that's, that's it. We, we produce what we're producing here with a healthy dose of, we know, you know, that a bunch of half asses don't necessarily make a whole ass. And you nobody know? supports us with money. So no. except for the people that maybe listen to this, the, like the Patreons do because they know what they're in for. Right. You know? Right. But there's no company giving us money to say what we're no. saying. Right. No, the best no. thing that we get is people giving us booze. And that's, are you, I mean, are you stockpiling booze? I mean, have you been getting bottles or anything that like when we do shot, finally have an in-person? We went from Dan Kropke's leftovers to now 12 or 13 good bottles on top of the fridge. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're all going one place. They're all going right on top of the fridge. So that's just. Are you saying they're better than my leftovers? No, but there's <laughs> there's more of them. What, what yeah. do you think? Yeah. Leftovers. What, what Phil was actually Dan, saying... When Dan, Dan leaves a leftover, there's very little leftover. Yeah, right. <laughs> but what, what Phil was actually saying, Dan, is that the next time we can reconvene as an actual podcast, we all need to take Uber. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Uh, good call. 
And right now, each one of us could have our own sleeve of bottles. There's enough <laughs> bottles at the shop. So we could do very well. But I just think, okay, so let's make it our personal thing this year to be very factual. And if anybody comes along with some misinformation, they can go fuck their hat, man. I don't want to know or, about or, it. I don't, I don't think we've ever been accused there. of this, but if we ever fuck up, we're more than willing to own our fuck ups and we will tell everybody about it. Right. Yeah. I'd like to. I don't know if I've ever really been a good bullshitter. I mean, I'm a bull, I'm a bad liar. I mean, I I don't know how to stretch this. I, I don't know. And he always starts laughing too. I know. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> He's I like, can't lie very well. <laughs> He's like, babe, I totally wore a condom. Six months later, Piper. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. Or nine months later. She was like, mm. yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all I got. Anybody got anything else? No, I, I think no. I, yeah. I, uh, that was it. That was a lot of motorcycle content. Well, so, we did not start with a lot of motorcycle content. <laughs> okay, but it ended with a lot of motorcycle. It took us a very long time to get our wheels up. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. I think everybody's there. We're, we're the same as everybody else in the whole world right yeah. now. We're, we're sick of everything and we're just trying to move on. Yeah. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy this, was, this had to be one of the worst, dreariest days. I mean, it was just sopping wet and cold. And right now it just started pouring really hard. You hear what's going yeah. on outside right now? Yeah, it's, it's not good. There's yeah. not good. I've heard my sump pump kick out in the basement a number of times. So, yes. the, uh, yeah, I'll oh, probably be bailing I, soon. I got a tech <laughs> tip for you. Yes. I got a tech tip for you guys who own a house. And if you own a house and your house has a furnace in it, so this is great. This one actually might save you guys. So coming out of the bottom of your furnace is going to be a tube. And that tube moves condensation moisture out from the bottom of your furnace into some drain that goes out of your house. Right. Right. And it turns out in my house with my furnace that was put in, you know, 10, 10 or some odd years ago, a high efficiency furnace, right? Um, our tube that comes down is made of copper. Mm -hmm. We all like copper. Copper's good, right? Well, no, no. Um, what had happened is my copper tube that is the conduit for getting the water out of the bottom of my furnace literally disintegrated. No. So right on, because it's just a trickle of water coming out, on the copper tube um, where it was put in, the, the tube is no longer a tube. The tube is like the letter C <laughs> the whole way down. It ate the whole thing. Um, and it's, you know, it's piece of, you know, piece of copper tube about 12 inches long. And it's just there to just move. You mean water 12 from, inches long? Yeah, yeah. It's just there to move water from here to there. Right. Right. But it was leaking and it was leaking enough that it, it caused me to have this perpetual, you know, wet spot in my basement that we thought was a bigger problem. And uh, when I get down there and looked and because we've had, you know, be dry, we had to do the be dry around the whole basement because we live by the lake and it gets real wet here. And yeah, it turns out it was just that fucking tube. And wouldn't you know, the top of the tube looked beautiful. Right. The part you could see looked great. But then you reached your hand behind it and it is completely. Oh, it's that last. It's that last eight inches. Yeah, <laughs> that'll fuck you up, man. Puts carbonic acid in the condensate. I mean, your condensate contains a lot of carbon dioxide, so I mean, it's it's like pop. It's like a sparkling water. It'll yeah. lead through metal. You got to use PVC. Yeah. You got to be careful because it'll take the twelve inches and make it eight inches really <laughs> fucking fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so that's a big that's a big thing. So you know, if you've got copper, remember that that water is very acidic. It's, it's very it's, it, it oxidizes, and it's full of everything that comes out of your air too. So that particular water that's going down that little copper drain pipe, have a look at that maybe once every ten years. Because if I would have taken a look at mine every ten years, even I wouldn't have had the leak. Well, I just had replace it with I replaced it with PEX. So That's what's it. funny is, so where, put, where they put the furnace in, um, going out to that pipe is PVC. Oh, really? <laughs> right, yeah. So where the dudes put that put the furnace in is all PVC, and then that pipe comes up out of the out of the floor, right? Because it just heads right. into the drain. But that pipe comes up out of the floor, and somebody did put in brand new copper, and I mean it's it's like a brand new vertical piece of copper going into pvc the pvc will be there forever the pvc yep. is going into 96 bends all glued together it'll 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 never go away but the they ran out of pvc when they did the job yeah the, the copper rotted out so i was like okay well 
And then, you know, it's easy to replace the copper because, you know, it's one inch copper. You, you don't even need to go to the store. There's a big piece of copper hanging off the end of your hot water tank right. and just cut as much as you need off of there. And Bob's your uncle, uncle, just put it right in. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed uh, I had a battery phenomenon that happened. Okay. So in my garage, I got the battery. The garage is semi, it's not heated. I have a, I had a battery. Uh, it was like a YTX fourteen or something on a, a battery tender junior. Mm-hmm. And I noticed when I went out there, it was green. It was good. I fired up the furnace, yeah. and interestingly enough, as the garage started heating up, all yeah. of a sudden it went from green to, to red. Yeah. It went. It started charging. I'm like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> and then eventually it went to flashing green. It went to green. But I've noticed now, every time I go out there, if it's really cold, it'll be green. But then when I turn the furnace on, it takes. it's interesting that it's doing something where when the battery thaws out, yep. it starts taking a charge. So that's something that I, I don't know exactly what's, you know, what the chemistry or physics behind that is. is but yeah, and I'm sure the battery's not fully frozen because the battery is a YTX, which means it's an AGM battery. Yeah, it's yeah. An absorbed glass mat battery. So there's not six inches of fluid in that battery. It's literally plates. It's literally absorbed uh, glass mats. And so, I say frozen. I mean, I just that it's at freezing temperature. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I get it. But I'm trying to figure out why the chemistry would be so, in such a fashion that it would change what it, the signal it was giving to the battery tender. Because yeah. those battery tenders all work on, they send a pulse out and they read a pulse back. And then that tells them whether or not to turn on and charge. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey, so, and, I, so I pulled up a chart here on why I would do that. Yeah. So at... At 20, at about 70 degrees, your battery will take a full charge. We'll be at 100% and we'll be at the capacity of the battery. If you are at 32 degrees, your battery's at 90%. And if you go down to 14 degrees, your battery drops down to like 70% charge. I mean, your maximum charge is only 70% of your charge at 70 degrees. That's cool. So what, what happens if you don't fuck with it and you just leave it for a month or two and then the temperature comes back? Does it come back? If you if you're if you have it totally charged at 70 degrees and the temperature drops down to 14 degrees then you're going to be the battery will have the amp hours of like a seventy percent of the the nominal charge at seventy to at that's, 70. that's hilariously interesting. Does it come back? Does it? No, come it comes back? back. So if it was at if it was fully charged right. and the temperature rises, then you have to charge the battery back up, though. Right. You do. I, I you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it is lost. I mean, if it's totally true, because it depends that's on what the, the whole energy. point of a float charger, right? Like the float charger handles that. So when it goes, but down, I think, but naturally, but okay. But if you look at float chargers plugged in, in the, in the spring and it stays plugged in. And t- so when you come out there in the, in the, in the spring and it's now warmed up to 50, 60 degrees, that float charger came on at some point when the battery got warmer and topped it back up. So it's, right. It's doing what it's supposed to do. As, as the anytime the battery isn't staying charged at hundred percent, it's it's charging it. We are so trained living where we live. We're just we're absolutely trained to believe that in the winter time our batteries aren't as charged. But the fact is, in the winter time our batteries are more charged. Their nominal their nominal operation is at thirty two degrees Fahrenheit. It's our oil that's thicker. It's everything else that's harder to push. Right, right, right. So when you crank your, when you hit the key or hit your button, it's not the battery that's weak. It's everything else has more resistance. The more load. Yeah, yeah. more load. Exactly. Your clearances are tighter too. That's right. Absolutely. So every job gets harder when it's mm-hmm. 32 degrees, except for the fact that your battery is stronger. And that's why in a lot of um, electric applications, cooling a battery and keeping a battery at the correct temperature mm-hmm. is desirable effect so that you have the maximum amount of power available. It's the yep. shrinkage factor. The shrinkage factor, exactly. <laughs> that's it. Excellent. Cool. I think that's great. Look at that. Another tech tip. Who'd have thought? That was a bonus because we tried to sign off. Yeah, we did. That was great. It. All right, gentlemen. Well, that was the first of two, 2021. I'm, I'm very happy. I think we've uh, produced a completely cromulent episode and that anybody out there will be happy to receive it. Yep. I agree. Yeah. And there then, you, you know what? Don't forget to check out and I'm going to be selfish here. Motor Stories with Unky Phil. 
because it's been really good and it's been really great. fun. <laughs> the last one with Steve and the gun was my favorite. By that far. was good. That was yeah. definitely good. Um, nobody's hated them at all. No, it's definitely. been good. And, and uh, we appreciate and I'm reading all the comments and I am, I saw you are too. Yep. So I, I'd say that, you know, the good news is we tried to keep it interactive. So everybody who's making a comment is getting an answer. Right. So, you know, right. we're responding to them. So, but it's definitely is different, but it's the same. It's mm -hmm. like the same thing and we'll bring everybody in and, and the yeah. guys that are here, they'll have a story, whatever, but it's just, it's, it's how we can um, kind of get into depth on some of the small things that we talk about but like you can get them in a bite size, 15 minute or less, uh, consensual, cons concise, yeah, consensual, <laughs> it is consensual, but it's also it's consensual and it's interesting. So definitely well, the, the teaser is going to be the next batch that I, that we do are, I'm going to get other people. I'm going to get people I know to donate their videos and their pictures because the next one we are going to do is called silver wing excellent i've and heard about this it, it, since we dropped the first one every comment on some one of the videos has been like phil drop silver wing we have to do silver wing so um, we're going to do silver wing but i don't want to do silver wing until we have all of the substantiating documents and uh the the video that informs it because well, i did talk to the guy who actually has the real video from when it occurred and it's like the zapruder film so it's going to be a very like, important thing missing a few frames and yeah right one of those things, we're going to stop it we're going to back it up we're going to stop it we're going to back it up we're going to stop it we're going to back it up to, to to maintain our friendship i have to be open and honest with you i have been courting renee to do a moto stories She's so at perfect. some point, Renee is going to do she, a mode of stories as perfect well. for it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. And she's going to drop the truth and, and, and the hammer on what actually happens at Cleveland Moto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, and she's a good one to do it because she's yep. been there for the vast majority of it. <laughs> she, and don't ever give her sodium pentothal because that's where all the bodies are buried is going to come out and all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> no she's awesome by the way she is just like, like i uh, all the years like i never i've never known a um a, a place of business that has had the same people for the most part the main people for like 20 fucking years oh yeah absolutely <laughs> it's fucking crazy if they have wayne do one because oh yeah it's like uh it would be like uh the Chappelle show when he's talking about uh <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, or, yeah, his brother. James, yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, there's there's a whole lot. There's a whole lot of that stuff in there. They're going to be the Wayne wonders, Brady. <laughs> yeah, Wayne <everybody laughs> wonders at all. Yeah. Um, that oh, gives, amazing! Oh no, that gives you an idea of how long. Uh, yeah, of how of how long we've been together. So yeah. that's been. Uh, yeah, he's going to hate you for it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be good. That's all we can guarantee, man. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, that's what we got. Everybody out there, uh, that was 309. Yep. So ride fast and take chances. Play us out of here, John. All right, I'm hitting the button. I'm hitting the goddamn button. Here we go.